Slowpoke Rodriguez. Oh, yeah. Slowpoke Rodriguez. There is no one better than Slowpoke Rodriguez. All right. So it looks like we're streaming now. Good. All right. So let's just start with a little bit of. Slow what is this mouse can make? Which is me. Not his slowest mouse. Which is you. Maybe Slowpoke is pretty slow downstairs in the feet. But he's pretty fast upstairs in the cabeza. <laughs> so poke. Yeah. Right. I'm getting set up here. While I'm getting set up, we're going to listen to Slowpoke Rodriguez. I show you this, but I think I get banned from YouTube. Watch this. Wait, listen to this. Rodriguez, the lowest mouse of Mexico. Buenos noches, senor gato. That's what Slowpoke says to uh, the cat. Uh oh, watch this. Is this where lives it, my cousin, Senor Speedy Gonzalez? Slowpoke? Oh, yeah, yeah, you sure. Come right in. Uh oh. Senor Slowpoke. Uh oh, watch this. Senor Slowpoke, you will be good with the chili peppers. This is no place for a country mouse, it's too dangerous. What do we eat? I'm hungry. Now watch this. That's what I wanted to tell you. Slowpoke Rodriguez. He packed a gun. That's Slowpoke Rodriguez. He packed a gun. And all that means is that anyone uh, who wonders about the love of the Second Amendment, just watch local Slowpoke Rodriguez because he's being bullied by Jose the Gato. And Slowpoke says, bang, because he packed a gun. Yeah, Speedy Gonzalez, fastest mouse in Mexico. Oh, man, I, love, I actually like Slowpoke. He's better. He's better. It's kind of like scooby dooby doo versus Scrappy-Doo. Nah, scooby dooby doo uh, was better. Yeah, they probably, that is copyrighted. I'm sure I won't get paid for this live stream. Oh, well, what are we going to do? Um, uh, they, uh, I did a, I had Black Sabbath on one time uh, into the void. Just same thing on my cell phone. I only had it on for like freaking 30 seconds. And I got uh, another from Boston, Jake O'Leary from Boston. Shocking. Um, and uh, I got, I, get, I got that one uh, demonetized as well. But uh, nah, what are you? uh let's see my man rob w from wista says they got six inches of snow up there man alive i had a guy from yarmouth maine said uh same thing you say you got hammer some snow he's ready to get the h out of d that means the hell out of dodge here it was 50, 60 degrees yeah 63 66 68 73 73 72 so much easier to say uh in the middle of the summertime that you miss the northeast then comes uh the winter time you're like yeah i'm glad i don't <laughs> yeah Woo. when i was coming back from rapid city whoo it was freaking it was 19 degrees this is you know blowing uh, it was cold you get back to atlanta get off the you know the airport so i'm waiting to get on the plane in rapid city just freezing man i get off the plane in uh in atlanta oh i was like yeah yeah there's something about said about uh, the cold <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So that's rapid. That's uh, Milton, where I live. Boston, yep. And they're calling for a uh, oh, – man, well, you guys ah, – hell, Jake or whoever, Rob. And Boston, I mean, they're calling for 63 on Thursday, 64 on Friday. So what are you griping about? That's nothing, man. That is nothing. All right, so Tony says, 
How about a video for a single person who doesn't care about leaving anything uh, to anybody, but wants to make sure he has enough for old age? Um, uh, <laughs> was that a shooting rude lawful by the district attorney? Mouse. <laughs> I'm sure it's actually a district attorney cat, gato. Um, yeah, just then you do annuities, Tony. I mean, literally, that's the best thing about annuities that they guarantee as long as you're breathing, you're going to have income. That's just a fact. So the easy way to that is just annuities. Look, there's nothing inherently wrong with annuities. All these people, I don't, I don't think they're good right now um, simply because they don't, there's literally, the interest rates are so low, you're going to have to live essentially 22 to 23 years to make it worth to get any money back. And I just think, might as well just dump it in a GMA fund and take what you need from there. But nothing wrong with doing annuities. You know what I mean, guarantees income for as long as you live. There's these things called mortality credits, which means so when an annuity happens, um, oh yeah, I can, there we go, sweet. La cucaracha. Ooh. La cucaracha. All right, so just good old fashioned standard deviation. All right, so we got good old fashioned standard deviation. This is the life expectancy on average. That's average life expectancy right there. Some people are going to die here early. And the people who die here are, substitute, are, are subsidizing the people who die later. And these are mortality credits. So you get, you get the longer you live, the more you get from annuities because they're living beyond your average life expectancy. Um, I don't have a, hold on, let me go get something to wipe that up. Uh, be right back. Oh, there you go. I don't say that. There we go. Anyway, so um, with this right here, um, you can see that if you die early before your life expectancy, the people who live beyond their life and see are subsidized by the people who die early. That's no different Social Security. That's no different than any kind of annuity payout. Um, that's how it works. Now, the drawback is the life expectancies are increasing. The interest rates are incredibly low, and so the annuities just don't pay anything. I just don't think they're worth it right now. Um, a lot of people make an argument in favor of annuities, uh, economists and whatnot. I, I just, there's no value there. I, there's just not. And, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm an advocate of annuities. There's no other way around that. Oh, there it goes better. Um, uh, my uh, lime green shirt, I had uh, sent some to, to Meg in, uh, in uh, Massachusetts. And uh, she and her, I think, daughter modeled them. So uh, and I have the pictures. Uh, we can, and at some point, I'll throw on there. But I actually hard to get these lime green shirts on Teesprings, by the way. So I can't really use a, uh, like an image to have people modeling my gear because you can't buy these on Teespring with this color. You got to actually go buy your own. So if you're wondering where I get this lime green, uh, you just got to buy them yourself. And that's fine. I mean, you can use that. I mean, I'm happy to freaking email you or you can download that image. If you want to promote my me, I'm, hell, you don't need my permission to do so. Uh, all right, let's see here. Um, yeah, <laughs> ruling, that's funny, vinyl. Uh, good day, Josh, from Western Australia. Right on, Paul. I don't know what's going on in Western Australia relative to where Queensland is and uh, where, not NSW. Uh, but it seems like the freaking lockdown proponents are winning landslides. And, uh, I, man, I don't get – what the hell? What the hell? It's, it's, uh, and it was North NSW and Queensland. They both have – looks like radical libs, and they both won landslides in elections. And they have one of some of the most just insanity in terms of lockdowns. I, I just don't get it. That's my big concern for this election. That's how many people are scared and they think somehow Biden's going to, uh, I, I don't know. It's scary. All right. Uh, Max says, Dan Coolbert, enjoying your work. Right on, man. Uh, and then we have uh, had a frost in Connecticut. We had, we had a, uh, we had our earliest uh, um, frost. So I, I have a sneaky suspicion. I've already looked at some of my snap peas and they're, they're hurt for sure. Cause they did get some kind of frost. Uh, so we'll see if they survive. Hey, Patty. Uh, the only good thing about snow in October usually means a mild winter in New England. All right, we shall see. Iowa 60s this week, right on. 
Pierre, South Dakota report. Woo wee. Thought you might be in Rome, Georgia tonight. I know, man. I, I'd like to. That's about an hour and a half, and I, I'm just not that motivated to be honest with you, Rick. The Trumpsters in Rome, Georgia. I mean, that dude. They must feed him with some serious steroids or something like that, because that guy's everywhere. That's nuts. That guy is everywhere. I, I mean, he must be on something. And look, I don't care. Um, but <laughs> hell, we're all on something, aren't we all? Caffeine. You know, I take Lexapro. Some of you guys take whatever you take. Uh, but Trump, so that guy's nuts. He's a, a, you know, he's a machine. He's like the, uh, uh, he's like Michael Kitsis on financial planning. Kitsis produces so much content and it's just, it's look, man, I just pick up my phone. I start yapping. That's it. That's easy to do. That's not, I mean, whatever. Uh, Kitsis does like incredibly research, well thought report. I'm like, damn, I, I don't know that guy's not human. Uh, JD Jill's in the house right on uh north carolina right on right on all right you like your pension annuity yep hey harry right on even from Bangor, Bangor, maine right on i'm sure you've seen lots of trump signs up there my friend because even stephen king said eh, too many trump signs eh. there's bob from arkansas uh huge ice storm hit oklahoma this week even said john i'm six i'm K manifesto. I'm 50 single male home and car paid for. Got insurance, 760 thousand bucks in brokerage. And uh, Lee, right on. Um, uh, right, all right. So good. All right, here we go. Perfect question. Uh, what are your thoughts on the en enrolled agent designation? Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, Diddy, Diddy 911, big fan. Paul says he's been locked up at a hotel for 10 days since we returned. Four days ago. Freaking nuts, man. I'm sick of this crap. I am so sick of this crap. This is this is freaking evil. I was listening to a guy today from Ireland today, and I don't know. Actually, I don't want to say anyone commented um, on a YouTube channel. He said they had three mass suicides um, or, or, or murder suicides in Ireland last week, and um, and you know the, the you know we don't know exactly. Of course, the media is just saying the, you know, the media is going to say whatever the media is going to say. I said, I said, look, is this normal in Ireland to have that? I mean, I don't know. I mean, is there three a week typically or not? Let's see if anyone has uh, uh doesn't look like anyone. Has. So I asked a question. I said, all right, no, I guess no one answered, responded back. That's too bad. Um, anyway, so I said, look, that could be issue if it, but if it's typical, it's no big deal. I hate to say it's no big deal, but I don't know. But anyway, so Ireland's gone freaking nuts. Yeah, it just it's, it's just it's Scot Scotland. You hear what they're trying to do? This anti-racist thing that if you're sitting around a, your freaking dinner table, it's like the Mao. The Maoists are here, man. They're here. They're here. The Maoists are here. This is Mao crap. You report on your parents. You report on your neighbors, and people are just like. Ugh. It's the same people. You're freaking nuts. Screw all that crap. I'm sick of it. The Maoists are here. Just watch what's happening in Scotland. This is bad. This is evil, evil, evil crap. Your kid's going to report on you. Huh? What does that remind you of? Yeah, you should know. Crazy. Crazy. What the hell's going on in Australia? What the hell's Scottish? I, I got Scott. I got Irish. Scott's Irish. What built Appalachia? It's crazy. Uh, and yet the freaking people back there are just are it's the most insane thing. And yet when they get a chance to vote, they vote to confirm it's okay. Ain't gonna happen here. I can see it in my way. We will get a little bit of politics later. I want to read this article first, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna prove to you once again what I've been saying all the time that retirement plan, they've been undercounting income, big flipping time, undercounting income, overcounting expenses. All right, so back to my man uh, manifesto. He's 50, single male, home and car, uh, paid. He, he can get insurance from his job in five years. He got 760,000 bucks in a brokerage account, 500,000 bucks in uh, savings. Could he retire at 55? And a bunch of you guys say, uh, there's vinyl, expenses. There's Rob, expenses. Yep, exactly. Until we know expenses, uh, we don't know. Uh, that's, I mean, I have no clue, man. Uh, I think Trump is truly super, yeah, right on. I believe, uh, <laughs> yeah, Trump, exactly. Trump is Speedy Gonzalez and, and freaking Sniffy Joe is slow poke, Rod, slow poke Rodriguez, exactly. Uh, Hunter is the only one who should be locked down. Think Orange Man, oh, yeah, absolutely. Orange Man is winning going away. All right, so security question from Deborah. Uh, FRA is 66, PIA is 2000. Does COLA start at FRA 
or at 62. All right, so actually what happens here is that <laughs> once you hit 60 is when they no longer use your average wage index and they essentially use COLAs at that point. All right, uh, is it 60 or 60? I, could, I think it's 60. It's, it's your, uh, your earliest year of eligibility is 62, but it's based on the average wage index until you're 60. Either way, it's the, your, your COLAs are either 62 or 60. I'll talk about the camera. Um, and AWA is a little bit, the average wage index is a little bit higher. I'm almost positive it's 60, Deborah. So your COLAs kick in, we're just going to say 60 at 60, not your average wage index anymore. Um, so Social Security COLAs start at uh, 60. Um, and so the 2000 amount, this is what freaking infuriates me. Let's just take our trusty calculator. So this actually, on the video I did earlier this morning, I, I just, the Social Security Administration does such a piss poor job. At, uh, I mean, I know they try. Uh, it's a bureaucracy, but they do such a crappy job of actually telling people how valuable Social Security is. And so you have all these young ones saying, hey, I'm not going to get Social Security, which is freaking stupid. I hate when people say that because it's dumb. It's a dumb thing to say. And you can plan a retirement without it. That's fine to make sure that you're fundamentally sound. But then how are you planning taxes? It's stupid. It's just it's, it's a dumb maneuver. Don't do that. If you want to plan 20% reduced, that's fine. I don't think you should, but that's fine if you want to. But to not plan on any Social Security, that's stupid. Then how do you, there's no way to make that plan valid. There's none. All right. Part two is Social Security. If you're 30 years old, it's going to say, look, you've earned enough to accumulate 1500 bucks at your current income until you're at your 67. All right. The $1,500 a month. That's what you say. So I'm 30 now. When I'm 67 years old, I'm only going to have 1500 bucks a month of income. That's what it looks like. The social That's literally what the social security statement says. It does literally say that. The problem is it's not 1500 bucks a month. It's $1,500 a month in today's dollars. And so what people do is say, man, if I just put $1,000 a year into an index fund and blah, 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 I'd have 3 million bucks at 4%. That'd be 120,000 a year. And so what's Social Security stealing from me? And they're looking at, I mean, there's, and there's some legitimacy to that argument as well, but they're looking at it wrong, man. They're saying, oh my goodness, I'm only getting $1,500 a month from Social Security after I'm paying all this money in. No, it's not $1,500 a month. It's $1,500 in today's cost. Ah! And so you can't turn around and inflate future growth investments on your investment portfolio to compare that to Social Security in today's dollars. It's stupid, but people do it all the time. Hell, I did that. Stupid. I'd be like saying, man, my house, you're saying my house is going to be worth 700000 bucks in 30 years. Right now, it's only worth 200000 bucks. I mean, it's just it's completely, it compares to apples to oranges. Your house today is not the same value as your house 30 years from now. So you say... My house 30 years from now is 700,000. My house today is 200,000. Thus, my house today is a freak. I'm getting, it's a bad deal. It's just stupid. It's dumb. Oh, it drives me up the wall. All right. Uh, three people talked about expenses right on. There's Dwayne. I want to actually read, actually, let's see. I'm going to read an art. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool, actually. So hold on just a second. Um, let me find this article. Let me find this article. Hold on just a second. There we go. La Cucaracha. La Cucaracha. Uh, do I not have the article anymore? Oh, man. So we will find it. Don't you worry, my friends. Don't you worry about thing. Don't you worry about thing. We're going to find this article just reading right now. If I can, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Hold on just a second. Okay, right here, hold on a sec. Here we go. La Cucaracha. All right, cool. You guys ready to see this article? This is fun. All right, so let me share my screen. So Georgia Tech played Notre Dame yesterday, and one of our loyal followers here, or followers or watchers or subscribers, whatever, sent me this article. When Georgia Tech stunned number one Notre Dame in a 3-3 tie. Check this out. All right, let me get rid of that guy. There we go. Boink. 
Oh man, I can't walk. Ah, I've already read it. Ah, geez. All right, I guess I'll have to. Man, how can I can't read that? All right, let's see if I can read it right here. Oh man, I read full story. Let's see. Well, let's even read the full story. Yeah, sweet. All right, this is pretty cool. All right, so 40 years have passed, but the memories aren't difficult to access. Access. Dwayne Wood. Well, anyway, they talk about uh, Notre Dame, uh, you know, coming to Georgia Tech, and I think they're the number one team, and uh, Georgia Tech played them to a tie, and then uh, and then Georgia had actually ended up beating some Ford, I think that same week in Georgia with Herschel Walker, the man of all men uh, went on to win the national championship. So Georgia tech actually helped Georgia win the national championship because they tied Notre Dame. How crazy is that? So anyway, they pulled some kid off the streets, basically the quarterback when the Georgia tech quarterback went down with an injury, his name was Ken Wisenhut, Wisenhut hunt. And you may remember Ken, I think he was a coach for the, uh, for the Cardinals when they went to the Super Bowl, if memory serves. But anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. So our man, Dwayne Wood, who's on here right now, uh, he actually got an interception, and he led Georgia Tech. Uh, he had like 171 tackles that year, the second most in Georgia Tech history. That is pretty cool. So you, my friends, are amongst, uh, uh, you know, just greatness in terms of Georgia Tech football. Uh, but that's pretty cool, if you ask me. Not every day. Do you, why does that always do that? Hold on just a second. I'm, where, I mean, where? Well, let me, let me just, yeah, I don't know why I always end up losing the live stream. Where'd it go? Okay. Never mind. So we're going to have to. Uh, is that right there? Nope. Right there. All right, cool. There we go. So anyway, that's pretty cool. So that was uh, Georgia Tech. And of course, uh, a Georgia Tech loss yesterday, but I guess they played a tighter game than than would be expected. That's for sure. Uh, all right, let's see. Papa Doe's dining room is full, half mass and half not. Dining room is full, half masked up, half not. I can't believe it. It's a, I guess I can't believe it. I can't believe it. How people threaten to cancel you just based on Trump vids. So insane. Eh, who cares? I, I mean, literally, who cares? Uh, there's a guy I watched. Oh, some wind. The guy I watched the other, uh, about a six, I forgot his name. And he was in the army. He went to Iraq. It seemed like a good guy. I liked his videos. But then he started insinuating Trump voters are racist. And I look, I'm just, I can't have that. So I, I unsubscribe. But I say, I'm unsubscribing from you. I, I just don't care. I mean, the funny thing is, let me show, well, I don't know if I have it up yet. But you can look at the stats and uh, <laughs> you can see where you get the, the subscribers uh, on some of your videos. It's funny. And so all these people say you're pissing off 50% of your uh, reader base or listener base or whatever. They don't see how what the hey it's idiotic to think finance and politics don't meet in the middle is dumb. That's a dumb uh, the thing to think. But be it as it may, uh, but when people actually take a stand, you're solidifying the half of uh, the people who are are appreciative of you. That makes sense. They get more appreciative of you because you're taking a stand, especially when you're taking a stand in a way that's uh, going against the grain. It's uh, I, people are idiots. I just, there's no other way, not all people, the left doesn't have to think. And so the left can make idiotic choices and, and, and make determinations like, you're pissing off half your base. I say, yes, uh, yes, but I'm becoming more, drawing more allegiance to the other half, all right? So I might be losing you and you say, you do great financial planning videos, blah, blah, blah. Well, who's actually at the loss, all right? So if you like my videos, but you don't like my politics, all right, so does my politics as I'm one vote offset the videos I'm doing to help you financially? I, I, that's, I literally could care less. However, the people who like my politics and like my financial planning videos, they're gonna be more aligned to me uh, simply because they like my politics and they like my videos. And they're gonna be better off financially too, for sure, that's fine. But if you say, you're going to spite, you know, whatever is your nose to spite your face, whatever, cut off your nose to spite your face. I don't care. I just, I just don't care. I had a guy the other day say, you got some th thick skin because all these 
people are, it just matters not to me. And look, I'm 50 years old. Man. I got four kids. I was in the infantry. I went to ranger school. Did not pass, but I went. Maybe I just have uh, been around the block more than uh, other people. I don't know. But uh, I just don't care. People can say whatever the hell they want. I, I'd see these you know, bots with a pretty Asian girl saying, I need boyfriend. I try to delete those as much as I can. I don't usually delete the lefties until they start, you know, basically we had one guy, I haven't seen him around lately, Char Charlito Mano or something like that. And he was trying to create his own personal blog off my channel. And I told him, I said, if you keep doing that, I have to delete you. Um, but I had to delete him. He's just not around lately. Um, it was funny. He had posted a video and uh, Jonathan Blackman too. They're not coming around much lately because I think they see the Trump train is rolling and I think they're getting nervous. So Jonathan Blackman had posted a couple of videos that were, uh, pretty uh, 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 irrational, and I remember thinking, "Dude, you're you know not a calm guy, but you know, the the pretty they were pretty spiteful." And I was like, "Man, are you getting worried, aren't you?" And uh, Charlito Mano or whatever his name is, I haven't heard from him lately either. I've had a band a couple people, and they start getting you know, too personal. Like uh, what was her name, Mary or something like that? I don't think it was a true chick. I think it was a dude, but she he was getting uh, he was starting to become a little bit. Uh, a little bit too mean spirited and like i just liberal debate doesn't bother me but you know you start being stupid i'm just i don't have any tolerance for it. it's actually funny because my man jack spurko who's a big libertarian anarchist he bans people all the time because it's my platform i mean i mean if you just want to be an idiot i'm just gonna ban you i think that's kind of funny um and i generally speaking don't ban people who are just talking smack paul politically because i tell you one of the best ways to get people to your side is to allow the idiots to be idiotic. And I'm telling you, the left-wing arguments are few and far between. There are some good ones. But always remember, it's the silent people, man. That's who you're, you're not, it doesn't matter. Who, it does not matter the guy or lady you're arguing with. That, that's, that's a lost cause. It matters the people who are observing, who aren't commenting. And there are a hell of a lot more than that. I'm telling you, I can see this at analytics. There's a lot more people uh, who comment uh, who don't comment but who watch and you can just see because of you can just tell trust me I, I see the analytics and so what you're trying to do if you're debating people is you don't care about this person that person's idiot you just whatever you say i'm trying to appeal to this the silent people who are witnessing that. that's how i'm telling you man that's how i got to become anti-climate change propagandist because i watched the shrieking hysteria of the climate change people it's nuts I said, these people are nuts. They're not trying to engage in debate. They're just insane. It's nuts. And I said, if they're that over the top and other people say, just debate, just debate. And they don't do that. They just say, you basically want everybody to die. I said, that, that doesn't make sense to me. And so then I started reading it more and more. I said, oh, these people are stupid. They're idiots. No other way around. And they might be idiot and stupid. The same thing with the vaccine mandators. You know, the back, the, say, we're going to mandate vaccines on everybody. I, you just watch a debate on that. Just, I mean, do it yourself. Watch a debate. On the pro-vaxxers and the, and the, and the not anti-vaxxers, but the agnostic vaxxers like me. I said, yeah, I'm not so sure. And just watch the debate and you'll quickly come to the conclusion as if I did. It's like, why are these people so, so angry and so hostile? Because they have no argument. It's nuts. It's nuts. Anyway, all right. Uh, yeah, funny that Eastern Europe become more free than Western. I completely agree. It's, uh, it's, it's nuts, man. Um, <laughs> it, it's... Affluenza. Now I'm not doing a live stream Tuesday night. I'm literally not paying attention. I got I have a call set up for seven or six. I can't remember. I want to line up another one for Tuesday night. I just look. It's like the Patriots and Super Bowl. I just can't watch, and uh, and I can't watch. I'll probably pop two uh, Tylenol PM so I can get knocked out quick and go to bed and just wake up and you know that way I don't have to wake up at four. Just have my phone there. So what happened? Because that's that that's what happened last time. I went to bed pretty comfortable in 2016 i had a pretty good feeling about 2016 because i watched the uh, conservative treehouse i read him and he was just saying these polls are nuts and then basically a, a month out he just stopped analyzing because he says all oh let me show you guys something this, i want to here we're going to go on to another one here real quick um is that the one i want or is that the one oh not that one hold on just a second Ah, just keep doing the same thing. Hold on just a second. And I want to read you this article, man. Why does it keep coming to this thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, boy. Stop sharing. All right. Hey, boy. 
All right. Hold on, everybody. There we go. I'm going to show you guys something that is going to. Uh, I keep screwing this up. Oh boy. All right, there. Right. So hold on just a second. Why is this? I don't get why it keeps doing that. It's getting on my nerves, though. That's not what I want. Right there. I want that. Now I want to go here. Oops. I want to go here. I want to go here. All right. And I want to go there. Nope. I want to go there. There we go. And now I want to bring myself back up. There we go. All right. So let me, <laughs> yeah, that's fun. All right. So let's go to, um, there we go. All right. Sweet. That was a cluster. All right. So I want to go to, um, again, powerlineblog.com. I'm a big fan. Uh, but anyway, so I want to, oops, I want to show you guys this right here. Um, all right, so this is my man, Paul Marengoff, who's a lawyer out of D.C. area, purportedly a smart guy, and I was, I was stunned. He's not a Trumper. He claims he's for Trump, but he's some – I don't believe it, actually, and I'll, and I'll prove to you why I don't believe it here in just a second. This guy, he's not a spring chick. He's probably in his 70s, you know what I'm saying? And I, I was stunned how he fell for this right here. A new Wall Street Journal, NBC News poll, finds that Joe Biden leads President Trump by 10 First of all, it's just stupid. I, I don't even care. The 10 point, there's no 10 point lead for Joe Biden. Uh, Hillary, Obama, none of them got 10 points. No one's getting 10 points. That is, Trump isn't getting 10 points. Biden isn't getting 10 points above their competition. It, it's just as dumb. And especially when it's 52% for Sniffy Joe, it's just, it, I don't, I, I could care less. But it's worse than that. It's worse than that. And the fact that this guy buys it, is, is, it boggles my mind. The poll also finds that the race is somewhat twider in 12 states that pollsters, pollsters identify as swing states. Even so, if these poll numbers reflect a true state of the race, Trump has almost no chance of winning. All right. So why is this poll stupid? Well, let's click on the poll. I, I was stunned that this guy, I, I'm just, Biden leads among registered voters. I mean, no one in their right mind this close to the election pays squat mind to register voters this is freaking this is a, and, I, and i put a link in his or a comment I said dude this is rookie stuff here it's either rookie or you're truly an anti-trumper hiding yourself as a pro-trumper in order and you're trying to spread this narrative that, that no one takes registered voters seriously this close you could take in july you could certainly and if you're doing you know what's the state on people's worry about coronavirus registered voters is fine but when it comes to the last month of the election, no one takes registered voters seriously. I was stunned. I just, I don't, I'm sitting there thinking, this guy didn't just wake up yesterday. Oh, oh that's not it. Uh, where'd it go? Oh. This guy didn't just wake up yesterday. This guy's been around for a long time in the DC area and he's fallen for the, it just, it's insane. It's insane. The registered voters. No one takes registered voters seriously. I, I stunned. On the other hand, a new poll by the Democracy Institute has a popular vote split evenly with Trump anomaly ahead 48 to 47 in likely voters. <sighs> now, it's an outlier. Well, why is it an outlier? But it's not an outlier. He says, the guy from the Institute says, with most of the mainstream polls, uh, the, is that the electorate, the electorate will be much, much larger than in 2016, 10 to 30 million people more. That's 25 to 30% larger. That makes it essential that the polls capture many, many more Democratic voters. The Democracy Institute, Zogby, who's a big lib, and Trafalgar, Trafalgar, someone gets all mad I say it wrong. I'm from Maine, dude, so pipe down. Uh, those of us who find a very competitive rate sees turnout very similar to 2016. Exactly. Uh, speaking of North Carolina, I tweeted this from uh, Larry Swigart regarding the state of North Carolina. A uh, Dem lead down to 265,000, whereas in 2016, 
It was 310 by this time, and uh, Hillary lost by 3.2. Black shares down to 19.4, down by 20, down from 22 percent. Uh, we got a Des Moines. So let's look at this Des Moines register poll where Trump's up by seven. Like I, I just. <laughs> All right. So here's a Des Moines poll. Let's take a look. Uh, right there, the poll of 814 likely voters. Now, do I trust that? I don't trust any of them. I don't. I just see what I see with my own two eyes. And the only two eyes of the Trump train is rolling, man. They got Trump trains rolling through San Francisco now. It's crazy. Beverly Hills. Breitbart said Beverly Hills. Not no Trump. Uh, 90210 Trump train 90210. But anyway, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for likely voters. Anything else is just mind, it's just idiot, it's idiotic. It's, there's no one in their right mind would poll register voters. The fact that NBC News and Wall Street Journal just show you how insanely stupid the polls are. It's stupid. And if you just like, you go to real clear politics. Actually, let's do that. Let's go to real RCP uh, polls right now. I, and I don't really go here this much just because I just don't care. I mean, I'd rather see Trump in the lead, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, it's like, I, I mean, the polls are way off in 2018, way off in 2016. Uh, so what we got is they should say, do they say LV? Uh, they usually say LV. Um, yeah, I can't tell. Yeah. Anyway, they usually say LV. That's all we care about. Um, uh, let's see. They usually say LV. Uh, anyway, yeah, I don't want to say, say LV on here. It's weird. Um, well, actually, let's just see real quick. Yeah, they, anyway, they usually say LV. And if they don't say LV, then it, it's, it's, it's a big fat nothing burger. So the fact that people, I, it's just weird to me that someone who's somewhat of a, uh, not a novice in this stuff would, would take this seriously. It's weird. Uh, so how do I get, hold on just a second. I want to get back to, Okay. Okay. Oop, that's not what I want. Okay. I am having a hard time with this here today. What is going on? All right. All right. So there's my. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. All right. So I, I want to read you this. Uh, let me go back. Oh, boy. This will be a challenge to find this other article. Uh, there we go. All right, sweet. So I want to read you this one right here. All right, so hold on just a second. Let me bring myself back up. Go to share screen. All right, right there. Sweet. And somebody had sent this to me a few weeks back, and there's a lot of stuff in here, which is fantastic. All right, so we got, uh, yeah, August 6, 2020. I forgot who sent this to me. Let me make this bigger. There we go. All right. I guess. So we got Center for Retirement Research at Boston College, Center for Financial Security at Wisconsin, SSA, uh, Retirement Something Something, MBER, National Bureau of Economic Research, which I'm a fan of, Retirement and Disability Research Consortium, uh, 22 uh, or 6 August 2020. All right, right here, we got the evolution of late life income and assets, measurements and IRS and tax data in three household surveys. All right, so we got James Choi from Yale. He goes to Yale, he must be smart. We got Lucas Goodman from the Department of Treasury, Justin Katz from Harvard, another Harvard, and the Federal Reserve. So let's take a look at this. I wanted to show you guys something. This is nuts. The evolution of late life income and assets, measurements, and IRS tax data in three household surveys. All right. Recent research has found that some U.S. household surveys underreport income from sources such as pensions and IRAs calling into question assessments of retirement income adequacy based on survey data, B and Mitchell, huh? Who are B and Mitchell? Oh yeah, they're the people that said the freaking Social Security Administration, your stuff is jacked in terms of your tax facts for, or your Social Security facts that you put out every year. And as such, Social Security stopped doing that. I did a video two years ago on that. Probably need to update it. I, I can't find, I won't be able to find it now, but I'm just telling you right now, the Social Security Administration itself said, oh, the CPS data we're using before the current population survey is uh, shoddy at best. And again, I'm not saying it's nefarious. I'm not saying that at all. It's just government work, man. It's bureaucracy. And so B and Mitchell said, this, this is it's just jacked. 
you guys got to fix it. Stop using what you think is right because it's wrong. It's dis it's misleading people. Anyway, Chen Manel and uh, Sansenbacher has had something along those lines, which is less uh, oblivious, but I, to be perfectly honest, they're coming from the Boston College Center for Retirement Research, and uh, frankly, they've, uh, they've thrown in with the uh, Teresa Gerald Geldes from the new school that essentially 401ks uh, are not good. And they can all, uh, Teresa Gerald Geldy and all those people from the new school, they're commies. There's no other way around that. Stephanie Kelton, who advises Bernie, now is advising Obama, what's the name, Biden, Sniffy Joe. They're commies, man. It's all, they, they want you to be in chains. They do. That's why they hate 401ks, because 401ks are liberating. And as such, they'll pick up, they'll cherry pick anything they possibly can to make sure that you feel you're doomed. I almost wonder if they're paying Susie Orman because she's freaking nuts, dude. So let's just, Susie Karen Orman, she's nuts. All right, so Chen Manel and Sansa Bakker have also said some of this. And again, theirs wasn't nearly as bad. They try to make, uh, I would say they somewhat try to make excuses and it was, it just, it didn't stand the smell test. And I've done video on that too. In this paper, we examine how well three widely used household surveys, health and retirement survey study from University of Michigan, Survey of Income and Program Participation, SIP, and the Current Population Survey capture levels of and trends in late, late life financial well-being. To do so, we compare income estimates from these surveys to a 5% random sample of administrative, administrative IRS tax records covering the 1933 to 1952 birth cohorts. IRS data contain administrative, for, administrative records for most income sources in retirement, including distributions from pensions and IRAs. IRS data, hence, offer a unique benchmark to assess bias and survey estimates. To ensure comparability across sources, we harmonize income definitions, household definitions, the populations covered by each data set. We adjust for household size and dividing household income by the square root of the number of members, either one or two, as we do not consider dependents. Our income measurements exclude non-taxable government transfers, such as uh, SSI, which is not social security income. It's uh, supplemental security income, uh, basically your poor man's social security benefit and SNAP benefits. So our income measures exclude non-taxable government transfers. So they're not even going to include that in there, which is silly, but let's go on with it which are important for the left tail of the income distribution, all right? Because if you get SSI, supplemental security income, and you get SNAP, uh, those aren't sold as taxable income, but those are helping you to pay food, and they're helping you for income. That's a fact. And they're my Section 8 housing as well. Uh, we first compare survey estimates of level and trends in the data of pre-tax income as households age to equivalent tax data estimates. We focused on two groups, the households from 1943 to 49 birth cohorts, uh, observed from ages 58 to 68 during the initial transition to retirement and households from 1933 to 39 birth courts, cohorts observed from 68 to 78 during later retirement. So you see, we're seeing, hey, we got what happens when you are 43 and 49 and you're transitioning from work into retirement. And then when you're uh, 68 to 70, born in 33 to 39, transitioning from early retirement to later retirement. For each birth cohort and each source, we measure at each age the 10th 25th blah, 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 percentile of the, fra of the fraction of households receiving income greater than 500. Oh, okay, let's keep going. All right, to compare level income data across data sets, we calculate the percentage differences between each survey estimate and tax data estimate. Uh, to estimate trends as household age, we compute the proportional change at each point in the income distribution from age 58 to 68, and then from 68 to 78. Here, here it is. Table one reports across cohort averages of percentile estimates of probabilities of receipts of ages 58, 68, 78, proportional changes, blah, blah, blah. All right, so let's just go to the results. The results indicate that all survey sources underestimate median income for older households. All survey sources underestimate median income for older households. For the 1943 to 49 birth cohorts, average median income at age 68 is 30, we'll just say 38,000 in the tax data, exceeding estimates by an average of 7.4, 14.1, and 14% respectively. And we're not even including government transfers. Now, Social Security is not a government transfer. I guess it is, but it's a tax transfer. So it's included in this. Actually, I wonder if they include the 15% you don't pay. I don't know. 
for the 30, 33 to 39 uh, birth cohorts, average median income at age 78 is 20, basically 30,000 in tax data, greater than 10, 13, and 21% respectively. Additionally, the survey sources overestimate the proportional decline at age in the median uh, from 58 to 68 during the initial transition to retirement. Median income in the tax declines by an average of 11.7% from 58 to 68 compared with declines of 24% in the HRS, uh, uh, the Health and Retirement Study, 16% SIPP, 29% in CPS. The results suggest that relying on survey estimates to measure income levels or changes in income as households age may paint an overly pessimistic view of financial well-being. It freaking pissed me off. All these people run around saying we're all going to die. We're never going to have any money. Keep working because you're going to freaking run out of money. They're all lying. Sacks of excrement. They're all lying or they're ignorant or both. Ugh. Next, we compare how each source measures the evolution of household income distribution across birth cohorts. As, as again, Ty Bernicke, who should get a Nobel Prize and stuff, but he won't because he's not an academic, which is freaking nuts. Going back to Bill Buckley, I'd rather be governed by the first 200 names in the Boston phone book than by any faculty at Harvard. Uh, in table two, we examine the average proportional changes at fixed ages from 44 birth, birth cohort to 1950 birth cohort. Uh, median pre-tax income fell by an average of 0.2% in the tax data compared to declines of 7.8% HRS, 0.7% of SIP, and 0.9% CPS. Again, median income did fall. It fell. Again, median income but only by 0.2%. Does that make sense? So remember, they're saying median income fell 7.8% uh, in the, the health and retirement study, 0.7% uh, and 0.9% in the other studies. Median income has fallen. It didn't even fall even anywhere near that. So if median income is falling, does that scare you? No. Why? Because your expenditures are falling even more than median income. And so what you're seeing here is this: all the data says not only is your income basically freaking 15 to 20 percent less than what we've estimated, but your expense, your income is falling by a hell of a lot less than we're estimating as well. Of course, the expenses fall anyway. Oh, good night. At all other percentiles, the SIP and CPS do a good job capturing trends, while the HRS overestimates growth in the 10 percentiles and uh, overestimates declines. And say, okay, whatever. Uh, the data tax. Uh, 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 okay, so let's see. Uh, table two reports average changes from the 1933 birth birth, uh, birth cohort to the 1943 birth cohort. Averaging across ages 68 to 74, the tax data show that income has grown across the distribution by an average of 14%, 16%, and 19% in the 25th percentile median and 75th percent respectively. Uh, respectfully, yeah, respectively. However, the survey tend to exaggerate this trend uh, and above the median, the average growth. Okay. Uh, all right, so I, I I haven't really gotten into the overall charts. And I'll do that for a different video, but I want to, I just, the, let's see. Uh, see, if they're looking at tax data, though, because remember, your Social Security, let me just cancel out this real quick. Um, remember, your Social Security data, you're only, you know, well, I don't want to go into right capital. Do I? Eh, I don't know. Nah. Well, anyway, so in right, let's just for simplicity, let's just say for simplicity, you make $100,000 of Social Security. You'll never make 100000 Okay. Using simplicity here, people. People, bear with me. Only 85,000 that is going to show up as AGI. All right, that's it. Or in your AGI, because the first 15% you don't pay tax on. All right, that's just a fact. So I'm wondering if they're using, if they're using tax data, I want to see even better than what they're showing, simply because you don't pay tax on 15% of your Social Security. And how would it be reflected in the IRS tables uh, unless they're looking at, because uh, it doesn't say total income and social security. And the, no, let's tell you what, I'm going to go to right capital. Bear with me just a second. I'm going to show you something. Let's go to right capital, shall we? You make me feel like dancing. Gonna dance night away. We'll be dancing on Tuesday night when the trunk train rolls your way. On the board, the trunk train. Woo! On the board, the Trump train. People get so mad. I can't like your videos, but your Trump stuff. Oh boy, don't care. All right, so let's look at Bob, old Bob sample here. Um, let's make sure we got Bob sample up. All right, 
There's Bob Sample. All right, so what we got for, let's look at Bob Sample's 1040. Let's go down here to 2030. Yeah, right here. All right, so here's Bob Sample's Social Security benefits, uh, line item five, line 5A, 46,000, but only 26,000 is actually shown up on uh, in, for to calculate his AGI. All right, so basically we have 46,000 plus 33,000 of IRA distributions. I can't remember if that's Roth or if it's for RMDs. I don't remember. It doesn't matter in this regard. 33,000 plus 46,852 plus he's got that 3398 in dividends. So his total income is actually 83,250. But yet his AGI right here, so here it says total income, but that's not his total income. That's not. He's 40,000 of uh, 20,000 of his social security is not being subject, uh, is including his AGI. And total income is your adjusted gross income, is what it is. So uh, that's interesting. So I'm wondering if when they're using that, they're discounting even more of their social security benefit. Because how would the, I wonder, that's, uh, we can look at the IRS data. I haven't, I'm not gonna do it on the fly, but I do look at the spreadsheets on the IRS data and I like it. Let's just go back here real quick. Um, I can get caught in those IRS spreadsheets all day long. I tell you, something weird with me, man. Something weird with me. I want to see, bear me just a second here. All right, uh, cha table three measures changes in non-social security income. Okay, non-social security income. Yeah, let's see, uh, they, I got to read about how they're getting the tax data. Um, internal revenue service tax data. All right, so they're just saying tax data. I, we Is there a... Uh, all right, hold on just a second. Uh, all right, uh, how much uh, taxes will retirees owe on their retirement income? I'll read that some other time. I wonder how much they got for tax data. Hold on just a Iris tax records covering the 1933 to 1952 birth course. It came as admin records for most income sources in retirement, including distributions from pensions and IRAs. Uh, hmm. I, yeah, that's interesting. I, I'm. Do we want to go to Iris tax data? Yes, we do, don't we? All right, hold on just a second. Let's see if we can't go to Iris tax data. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this off the top of my head. Iris.gov. Hold on just a second, amigos. I think I can see I have a bookmark in here someplace. Let's see if I can find my bookmark IRS data. Tax stats. Right, let's see what we got. Individual tax returns. I also could. Uh, can we look at the non expel spreadsheet on a PDF? All right, let's. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's do, oh, right there. Oh, 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 yes. All right, here we go. Let's check this one out real quick. All right, so we're going to look at the, uh, all right, so let's bring us up here, boink. We're going to share our spreadsheet from the IRS. We're going to hide this right quick. So I don't know what, I mean, there's a bunch of different spreadsheets the IRS has. I'm not sure what they're using. Uh, can I make this bigger? Yeah, there we go. Can I get rid of this over here? How do I get rid of this guy? I don't want you. I don't know how to get rid of him. All right, so let's put my ugly mug right there. All right. Number of returns. You got 153 million returns. Adjusted gross income. They've got to be using AGI. And we just proved to you that AGI in and of itself doesn't reflect total income. So we got 153 returns, oops, and and of those, uh, basically two million have no adjusted gross income. But that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean you don't make any money. 
I mean, you can have no adjusted gross income if you have Roth IRAs and Social Security. You got no adjusted gross income. All right, so let's just see. Adjusted gross income, less uh, taxable income, nothing. Total income tax. Is that it? Average total income tax dollars. Okay. Average total income tax dollars. I don't get what that means. Average total income tax. That doesn't make any sense. So you're on line 11 here. Average total income tax is 44,000 bucks and they got no... No adjusted, I don't get that at all. Anyone can take a guess, what does that mean? Why would they have the average total income tax in dollars be 44,000 if they got no income? Income tax after credits. Right, there's gotta be something else with that line. All right, so let's go down one line here. Let's go down to this right here. All right, so if you got five under $5,000 of gross income of uh, adjusted AGI, Okay, yeah, there we go. We got nine million returns are filed with under five thousand dollars of AGI. Adjusted gross income less deficit. I don't get what that deficit means. What the hell does that mean? I don't know what that means. Uh, is that standard deduction? No, it can't be standard. Well, because they're saying I have to look at this deeper. Because they got amount AGI income less deficit in your average dollars. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Taxable, that doesn't make sense. They get, why? Well, okay, there's something. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, adjusted gross income less deficit. Man, that doesn't make sense to me. All right, so we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to dive into this a little bit more. Accumulate from larger size. Yeah. As I close out of that. All right, so let's. Uh, let me try something else here. Hold on, just a second. That that was. I didn't like that one. Let's go to one of their PDFs. Exemptions, like deductions, and tax items. I just looked at that. And yeah, we just look at. It. Hold on, just a second. Let me. Uh, Is that the one I just did? All right, here we go. All right, let's try this other one here real quick. Oh, yeah, here we go. Sweet. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, can you all see this? Oops. All right, there we go. All right, cool. So you can't make this bigger. Oh yeah, sweet. All right, so here we go. So here we got all returns, source of income, adjustments, deductions, tax year 2018. A total income, 153 million returns are filed. Salary and wages. Taxable interest, tax exempt interest. Qualified dividends, taxable social security benefits right there. It's not freaking total social security benefits. It just says taxable. So 21 million, oh, dude, this can't be this. 20, basically, we'll just say 22 million tax returns had taxable social security benefits which was $337 million. Uh, I'm sure that's billions, right? No, million, right? Or billions, let's get billions. All right, so anyway, let's take our trusty calculator. We had 20, we had 337, 046, 241, divide by 21792987. That's an average, that's 1500 bucks right there. That's not how they're getting their freaking $1,500 average, is it? You know how they're saying there's a, let me bring myself back up here. You know how they're saying there's a $1,500 average social security debt uh, payment? I can't, this is, can't be how they're getting that. 
I'm, I'm sure they're getting from Social Security Administration, but how that 337 million, you know, but it's not, it's going to be in thousands. So that'd be billions of dollars divided by 21, we'll say 22 million taxpayers that received it, taxable Social Security benefits. I mean, that can't, no, no, this, this can't be. It's, I mean, that's all it shows, a taxable Social Security benefit. So 15% is not even showing up here. At the very minimal amount, all returns, amount right there. So we have 337 million taxable dollars of, of well, it's actually thousands, a billion of taxable Social Security benefits of for 22 million taxpayers. of returns of married persons filing jointly. All right, so here we go. Of the 21, 22 million, 13 are either uh, survives, surviving widows or widowers or uh, married filing jointly. And then married filing separately, heads of households and single people. Right there. I, that can't possibly be. IRA payments. See, this is what they're going to do. Those people I just read, they're going to say, look, the CPS is missing the IRA payments uh, and so on. There's other surveys because they say, how do you get a amount from a, a, a employer on a regular basis? And a regular basis is what? You think like a pension every month or something like that. And people say, I don't get a regular basis. And so they say, no, I don't. When in fact they were getting IRA distributions, but just for like RMDs or whatever they want to take it out. But what the word regular in there is very confusing. I actually read the survey in 2018. I said, this is confusing. I'm stunned that no one figured that out because I said, uh, I, I would not know how they want me to answer that. I said, do you get money from a, a, a retirement plan? On a, I, and it says, do you get money from a retirement plan like a, a employer pension or another employer plan? That's what it said on a regular basis. It literally said that. Do you get money from an employer plan, i.e. a pension or another employment employer retirement plan on a regular basis? So I have an IRA and I don't get money from a regular pension, a regular uh, amount, and I don't get a pension. I don't have an employer sponsored plan anymore. So my answer, of course, would be zero, which is why the CPS was jacked up, the current population survey, because people are like, I don't know how to answer that. I, I'm a... Uh, Basic standard deduction right there. Total income tax. Let's see, do we got total AGI, total tax credits? Taxable income, where's AGI? Total I'm okay, AGI. See, this is literally just off the tax, the 1040. All right, so let's the uh, taxable cancellated debt operating loss. That's your income. Uh, the, 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 the IRA payments, that's an above line deduction, total itemized. I guess I don't have AGI on here. I don't see it. Or tax, oh, yes, I don't put it on. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so I don't see uh, AG, uh, AGI right there. Okay. All right, there's a total income right there. That's your AGI right there. How's that AGI being derived? Derived. That's uh, and then you go down here to taxable income. One twenty. That's nuts, man. Income tax after credits. Total income tax. To, I, I hope you guys see what we're doing here. This is, <laughs> I, I'm actually even more blown away than I was before, which is kind of scary because I was pretty well blown away before too. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's, uh, how many people have died? 
because they thought they couldn't retire because they were told a bunch of freaking crazy stuff. Uh, how many people were freaking got divorced? Because what's the number one cause of freaking uh, divorce? It's not infidelity. It's freaking finances. All because we've been told wrong. And it ain't true. <laughs> the numbers are freaking fraudulent. It almost reminds me of Fauci, Anthony type, one each, doctor, with his fake stuff. That guy's a chameleon, dude. When Trump gets reelected, I hope his first order of business is to fire that ass clown. I cannot stand that guy. All right. So, uh, how do I overcome the age bias being a young financial advisor by having confidence and knowledge? Is there anything else I can do to overcome this bias? Well, you're the one telling you, you got a bias. I mean, that's literally, has anyone said, I mean, how do you overcome the age bias to say that you shouldn't have a bias? I'm young, but I know what I'm talking about. I mean, that's literally what you got to do, man. You're always going to get biases. There's bias in everything. You know, people don't like, uh, you know, me, because uh, I, I don't wear a tie. Right? I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But you get bias with experience. I mean, you get confidence with experience, man. That's what it comes. So how do you overcome it? Well, you got to get experience. How do you get experience? You got to just start freaking doing the work. That's all there is to it. Uh, I'm definitely watching Sticks. Yeah, he's a live stream on Tuesday. Yeah, man, me too. So we can clank at all the Biden supporters screaming at the sky. Uh, wage indexing. My man Paul from Australia. Good day, Mike. Uh, wage indexing ends at 60, so that's where the cold begins, and Ben Point's locked in at 62. Right on, right on, Paul. Uh, is ABL doing a live stream on uh, on Tuesday? You'd be hard-pressed to get that investment income from $1.25 million. Oops. Okay, Dan just said you could hide the right side of the panel by clicking the paintbrush icon on the upper right for now. Okay, right on, Dan. Uh, you do enter your full Social Security, then taxable portion of 104. The IRS could, they could, but they didn't. Well, we just showed you. Uh, I have to ask why you're not live from Joe, Rome, Georgia tonight. I just, I don't know. I'm a, uh, let's just hold on a second. All right, hold on a sec. Trump will lose. Nah. Voting Tuesday, says Dwayne, and praying for the nation. We are part of the silent, determined voters. No polls and robocalls. Um, it's the, it's the crawl over broken glass uh, phenomenon, which the Republicans had and the Democrats had for Obama. That's a fact. That said, no matter what, no freaking sleep, no snow, like the post office used to be. Nothing going to keep us from voting. And like I said, my sister-in-law was in line in South Carolina for four hours the other day. Four flipping hours sweating like a pig because it's hot in South Carolina. You see what I'm saying? But she still voted and she pulled the lever for her, the president of the United States. She's on the Trump train. Awesome. And uh, no one's going to do that for Sniffy Joe. Now, you might do it because you hate Trump. I mean, let's let's not deny that. I mean, animosity also, I mean, hate can bring out bad, you know, the the well, the, and the people that broken glass too. You know, hate is also, uh, a, in fact, hate is a bigger motivator than love. We know that for a fact. But at the end of the day, I think less people hate Trump uh, than love him by far. Uh, and as such, Trump train's rolling, baby. Rolling on through. On board the Trump train. I can't wait. And I love it. I can't wait the way it does. Now, look, if Trump loses, I'm going to be bummed. I'm not going to lie to you. What are you going to do? I mean, you're going to sit back and freaking be like Antifa, BLM, and just freaking want to slit your throats and, or I guess slit other people's throats? No. Just, you know, living well is the best revenge. You just go and live your life, man. Do I think uh, Biden, look, Biden, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. That's the Biden isn't the scary thing. It's the people behind him, just like Obama. It wasn't Obama. It's the Eric Holders of the world, the freaking people he put in there and the, the, you know, the lowest learners and stuff who wasn't even put in there by Obama. But Obama gave him the green light to go crazy, to go Nazi on us all. And they did. They did. And then look what John Brennan did and all these clowns, Comey and What's the other guy there and the FBI and the CIA? They freaking went, they went to work and they thought they had it. All these guys should be in jail. Absolutely. Freaking these clowns should be in jail. Comey should be sitting in a prison. 
J John Brennan should be because they freaking were traitor traitorous uh, against the sitting president of the United States while they were in power, making stuff up. They should be in jail. Instead, it's Michael Flynn who's fighting for his life. When Trump wins, all that's going to change, man. The, the swamp, not only will we have arrested the swamp, and he has drained a little bit. Don't get me wrong. Comey's no longer in there. A couple of these other guys are no longer in there. Chris Ray, Ray I don't know what Trump, I, I don't get it. Look, I don't know why Trump liked Fauci. I just think Trump likes his butt kiss. I'm not going to lie to you. That's why I truly believe that you probably get on good side if you kiss uh, Trump's butt. Fauci is, I guarantee, the biggest butt kisser DC has seen for a long time. That's why I survived there so long. You know, but he'll go down in infamy for being just a scumbag. We all know that. But anyway, so at the end of the day, though, having your butt kissed by yes men uh, is not a good, it, you know, you can't blame Trump. I mean, God, my goodness, what can he possibly do? He can't manage everybody. At the end of the day, Fauci kisses butt. Uh, Chris Way kisses, Ray kisses butt, I'm sure. I'm sure Comey did, too, when Trump won the election. I'm sure Comey's like, hey, Donald. And, you know, Comey's a big, tall guy, 6'7". You know, he was uh, highly regarded on the Bush presidency. And so I'm sure Trump's saying, yeah, he's got to be a good guy. And I'm sure Trump went in there hoping to be middle of the road and you know, to get along to go along. I guarantee he did. And then he saw how wicked and evil these people were. He said, man, what the hell? And don't forget, his Republicans weren't taking his side either. Paul Ryan, they weren't on his side. The only person that was even on his side was Mitch McConnell when it came to the judges. That's it. Lindsey Graham, nope. Uh, Paul Ryan, nope. None of these guys were. Never mind Susan Collins and for freaking Murkowski. Uh-uh. But then, slowly but surely, the sentiment of the Republican Party backed Trump 94%. Have never seen that. Never seen that, man. The Trump of the Trump is supported by 94% of the Republican Party. And if you look at polls, if you got that much of a support on your own party, you're not losing. It's just not happening. And so do you have does Biden have 94% of the Democrats? No, because half those Democrats are socialists. The Democrats support Cuba more than they support Israel. They've actually done a poll on that. The Democratic Party is more in favor of Cuba than they are of Israel. The best thing that ever happened, frankly, was uh uh I think. Colin Kaepernick, right? And then the BLM stuff. And uh, there's another thing with the commies too. I forgot what it was. But anyway, that got the people in Florida fired up. And those guys rescued the Trumpster. Um, I, I truly believe there's a while not too long ago that Trump it was looking pretty bad. Uh, at least looking from the, I don't know, underground, but on, on top it looked bad. And then they had those freaking, you know, uh, you know, the freaking the anti-communists in Miami and Florida rallying on behalf of Trump because they're worried crapless about the commies because they seen it. The Venezuelans, all those people have seen it. And that, man, that started it off. It was, it was a wonder to behold. It was one. And now it's everywhere. Oh, it's freaking addictive. I know it would have been fun to go up to Rome. I wish I could. I just, to be honest, with you, I just, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm just not into crowds like that anymore. You know what I'm saying? Just not. I went to Reagan when Reagan, when my brother and I went to Reagan during his funeral, his, funeral, his uh, viewing, you know what I'm saying? So we went to D.C. was at 2004, 2002, when Reagan laid in the, you know, in the uh, Capitol, whatever the building was, the Capitol building. But there's a uh, the, not the Oval Office. I forgot what it was. It was freaking insane. We must have waited six hours to, to go and uh, walk around the thing for see Reagan's casket. And that was a memory I'll never overlook. Um, did I even have a cell phone back then? I think I did, but um, I think we, did I take pictures? I can't remember. But anyway, that was awesome. It was amazing too how many black people were there. I was stunned, you know what I'm saying? Because you think black people hate Reagan. Uh -uh. I mean, they might have, but there's a lot of black people out there to pay respects. Now, D.C. used to be Chocolate City. It's not anymore. It's rich hipsters now, but you know, still a lot of black people in D.C., but, in the, you know, they were out. There's a lot of, I'd say about a third, maybe a quarter of the people waiting in line were, uh, were black people. There's a good amount of anti-commies to Vietnamese, uh, whatnot, Cubans, what all the people who suffered through communism, East, uh, Eastern Europe people, too. We just got to talk to a lot of people is uh, accents. It was just it was great, man. It was it was uh, the level of uh, of just. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Thanks towards Ronald Reagan and his defeat of communism. It was it was it was wonderful to behold. It was one for people who were under the heel of the commies. Oh, what a great thing! And uh, anyway, is uh, and I remember I did that, and that, but that was a lot. And I just, to be honest with you, now I'm 50. <laughs> I have two. No, I had one kid back then. I lived in Virginia. Now I'm 50 with four kids. I get tired. I just don't want to feel like going to see the Trump trade. I just don't have it in me anymore. 
but we used to. My wife and I took Maddie when uh, in Phoenix. We went down to Capitol because we lived right downtown, right? And so we uh, we lived. It was when uh, Al Gore is trying to steal the election from Bush, and uh, we took Maddie when she's. She, she's born August, so she's three months old, my wife and I and Maddie on the back, and we were walking around the Capitol building saying sore loserman for Gore Lieberman, and uh, you know, it was a crowd of about 5,000 of us down there, and so uh, we've been ad advocates or radicals for a long time. Uh, as I told you before, my mom used to take me to anti-nukes rallies, you know, we've gone to, I mean, my dad had a Jesse Jackson for president's bumper sticker on his whatever the hell he had, we call it Snoopy. It's like a two door hatchback. You know what I'm saying? Back in 1984, it was a Dodge Colt or something like that. I don't think it was, but anyway, uh, you know, we've, we've always been rabble rousers for sure. But uh, my rabble rousing days are, are a little bit behind me now, but uh, you know, being in Maine with a Jesse Jackson thing, ain't too many Jesse Jackson supporters of Maine in 1984. Let's put it that way. But my dad was, and of course by nature, I was as well. Um, and we'd go to caucuses, all that stuff, man. I've been engaged in politics my whole life. I enjoy it. I like it. I, I get frustrated, just like the Patriots losing against the Giants. Uh, just watching uh, Flemmo Raps today. Uh, to, you know, he did a video, well, not today. I was watching yesterday, I guess, talk about Victor Cruz. And I never liked Victor Cruz, but that guy, uh, you know, to give him credit, you know, he won the Super Bowl with the Giants. I had forgot how. The Giants were nine and seven and how they snuck into the playoffs. They snuck in. They had, you know, the freaking guy from the San Francisco dropped that punt. I just said, if we play the Giants again, we're going to lose. And sure enough, we did. Oh, that's painful. That hurt more than, uh, than the Patriots winning the Super Bowl felt good. And the same thing, Trump winning the, uh, the, the presidential election was great. But it hurt when Obama won, lost. When Obama won, hurt more than Trump winning, if, than, if that made sense. So, um anyway so i'm still all right so uh abl is uh anthony brian logan black guy love him from west virginia big fan of abl he goes like this all the time puts his finger up all right per notch says i'm 58 wife 57 pulling the trigger on everything at 62 uh, 226,000 fixed income annuity with a rider paying 1400 bucks a month for the rest of my life. Uh, 1660,000 other 401ks house and car pays. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Anthony Brown, little right on man. Uh, I convert traditional IRA to Roth. The five-year clock kicks in. If I add money to that Roth next year, does a new five-year clock kick in? All right. Uh, the answer to that is my understanding is no, but don't hold me accountable if it's wrong because I've yet to hear, at least I haven't paid much mind to any uh, PLR, private letter ruling from the IRS or any formative statement that says the five-year clock on conversions, on conversions um, is, uh, I think conversions, you're fine, Bob. It was when you did a, conversion from a 401k i think conversions you're fine i do think conversions you're fine it was when he had something from an employer plan and i can't remember but i think conversions you're fine but don't you got to look I, I don't think there's any plrs on that yet at least not on my it's been about a year since i actually looked into that uh so double check that and let us know for sure because uh i, I think on conversions if it's ira traditional ira to roth i think you're fine if it's an employer plan to Roth, I don't think you are. I think each conversion has its own five-year rule for if some employer plan. Uh, plenty of Trump signs in Bangor area. Yep, he made an unannounced uh, visit to an apple orchard. Yeah, I saw the interview with that guy. He was very apologetic because apparently they're throwing arrows at that guy. It's like, dude, stand, man, stand up. I mean, he was he was okay, but it's like he was like, we don't want to be political, you know. We and basically is kind of kind of bashing the Trump campaign a little bit, saying if they had more people than we wanted. Then you know they basically he basically said they broke our rules. I was like, dude, stop being a freaking wimp, man. Tell the left to go pound sand. Bullies need a punch in the face. That's how you win. You punch him in the face. That's why Trump is so hated, because he punches him in the face. As that guy from the Orchard Apple Orchard, man, it's like, oh, my. I appreciate you letting the Trumps are come on board, but now you're being all defensive. You got more people in Maine to support you than you're aware of, as you know, just by looking at all the Trump signs, dude. Jeez Louise, stop being so squishy. Um,
Yeah, it's funny, uh, Chris. They also said I saw a thing that said Trump appears to a small crowd in Maine. They, they want to make it seem like a small. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, there's one in Beaumont, Texas. I'm from the north, and first time there's sounds like a franchise. And a, okay, I, didn't, I missed something there. All right, gotcha. Uh, I voted Trump three weeks ago. I'm going to start working part time this spring. All right, have fun, play guitar. Right on. You can play some guitar. Uh, don't say I'm never going to delete you, brother. Why, Sam? Why is I'm going to delete you? Look, Sam. I just want everybody to know. Sam's our resident liberal. He's he's not a troll. He's a good guy. He's a patriot. He loves the country. He loves the country. He served for the country. If memory serves, his granddad fought for the country and he came back and was treated like not quite like chattel slavers, but was treated horribly, as were all blacks back then. And it's uh, freaking disgusting. Don't delete me, bro. Um, but it just, you know, but it's, I, look, we can have pleasant conversations and disagree. It's okay. Um, uh, people can walk there. Yeah, right on. Uh, Trump to one. Not sure why Mary's always bragging about her. Yeah, I remember that, Homer. Mary's always, is she back? She was always bragging about her financial prowess, how she was in tech or st the software or something like that. She had like 3 million bucks. I was like, okay, who cares? Who asked? No one asked. I remember that too. It was weird. But she never had anything positive to add. I agree. Invest heavily when you are young and then dial back and pay off bills. Could not agree. Um, I live in Minnesota. Pay good taxes. Right on. Uh, voting Tuesday and praying for the, yeah, we were talking about that. Trump, nah. What's a fe fidelity fund that's equivalent to the Wellington? Man, I don't know. Uh, someone says check out Puritan Fund. Uh, I think Minnesota will go for Trump. Looks like it. Um, look at dividend stocks if Ford reinstitutes a dividend. Uh, I don't know, man. Portugal is a play great place to retire. Strongly thinking about it, but I'm just 51. Still worried about it. It won't be enough for 35 years. Talk to my man. Uh, was it John? Uh, is he in Spain or Portugal? I think he's in Portugal. He's thinking about Portugal. I think he might even bought some land there or something like that. Anyway, if, uh, if he's on here, he wants to reach out to you. Um, I, I just don't trust the Europeans, brother. I just don't, Carl. Um, I, I, you know, I look what's going on in Austria. Look what's going on. Was it Austria and another country, Ireland, obviously, but Austria and another one having major lockdowns. All these people kiss my butt. I mean, just this whole thing's crazy. Because they're all in, in the thralls of the World Economic Forum, the EU, uh, the globalists. They just are. And they know they got no money, so they have to kneel to the EU. It's freaking sad. It's sad. They have to kneel and capitulate to non-elected bureaucrats in the EU, the World Economic Forum, the Dav Davos crowd, Davos crowd. It's freaking disgusting. And uh, Portugal's going to do the same. They all threw in with it, and they're all going to be beaten down. I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Even though Portugal looks like a great place. I'm, no. USA or bus for me, baby. And uh, <laughs> hell, looks, I mean, AMLO, what's he doing in Mexico? He's a socialist. Has he got a lockdown in Mexico? I don't know. But I mean, he seemed to be doing okay for a Sochi. I don't know. Let's see. Does Mexico have a lockdown? Let's take a look here. Anyone know? Uh, Let's take a look. Does Mexico, and I use DuckDuckGo because we don't trust Google, even though uh, YouTube is a Google, but if you want the right results on your search engine results page, you can't trust Google. Does Mexico in lockdown, in lockdown. As Mexico goes in lockdown, hope is, uh, let's see. Yep, Mexico falls the rest of the world in lockdown. Well, that's in April. Okay, so Mexico extends lockdown to the end. Of, okay, I don't know if they're still in lockdown or not, but yeah. Uh, oh boy, because Secure Act Two out of committee. Oh boy, what the hell is Secure Act Two? Uh, I turned sixty. I have 1.25 million in retirement accounts and 800,000 brokerage account. I won't touch Social Security until my FRA. If I retire now, do I draw from a retirement account or use cash? Withdraw from your retirement account, brother. Absolutely. Hey, Mary. Que paso? Two more rallies tonight. Yeah, I mean, that guy's nuts. 
Uh, Trump is a beast, it really is. I still think it's hilarious that Dems will flip Texas. If that was true or close, Biden strategist would be an idiot. Not, yeah, I completely agree. Uh, if, if, if Biden thought he was going to take Texas, he would not be in Minnesota. He'd be in Texas. Uh, Dean, you aren't good. Yeah, right on. Can't wait for the snow. Uh, only fools. Uh, how big of an idiot will Nate Silver look? Does anyone see SNL Hillary telling Joe you might not win? Uh, I, it wasn't Governor Waltz. It was actually freaking Kami Ellison, man, who did. The AG, Keith Ellison who beat his wife or his girlfriend, by the way, but no one seems to care. Me too only cares. I guess I don't care. Don't forget Jacob Blake did the same, right? No one cares. No one cares. Uh, but yeah, freaking wife or a girlfriend beat her Ellison, uh, limited to 250, but it didn't matter. They strode up in mass in the, in the airport. It was fantastic. They, I mean, that's my thing. You can't stop us, man. That's the thing. I mean, that's, that's the issue. At some point, the freaking wall gets pulled down, then everyone just, but it's kind of like East Germany. You know, the minute a couple guys got through, there's this mad dash, and they just all went through. And was it named Honaker? So Honaker couldn't do anything about it. He wanted to. The guard said, no, you know, F off, Honaker. We're not doing it. We're not shooting them. A couple get through, and all of a sudden the swarm went, and Honaker knew he couldn't stop. And that was it. That was the end of the freaking Stasi. I wish those guys went freaking uh, Mussolini where they're swinging, or they went uh, Cusco where he was swinging. Uh, all the, I wish all those freaking commie tyrants were swinging, man. I wish Mugabe was swinging. I, I literally, I wish all these commie tyrants were swinging. Uh, but unfortunately, our side, some reason, has some stability towards the evil that is persists on the left. That's for sure. I don't get it. Why? I mean, they got the Nuremberg trials, Nuremberg trials, and they were swinging the Nazis. I got no qualm with that. Uh, what's his name? Freaking uh, Ike uh, Eichmann, Eric Eichmann is that his name? Eichmann, he swang. I wish these other guys would have swung too. I don't get it. I don't get it, man. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, Josh, here's a comment. Is Trump is going to win? Why not go live on Tuesday? Because, Sam, I don't want to. I don't want the freaking, I don't want the chaos in my brain. I'm confident, but that doesn't mean I'm freaking, I, I can't do the, the unknown. It's like, well, I went to my tennis match with my kids yesterday. Freaking, I can't watch, dude. I just don't have it in me. I can't take it. Never been able to. Can't. It's just, I don't have it in me. It was just, you heard my videos on freaking the Patriots 28 I can't take it. After the Patriots are down 14 nothing against the Falcons, I turned it off. It said, I can't. Can't listen anymore. Can't do it. Kills me. Uh, Dean says he can't take the rat race anymore. Yeah, he needs to get the hell out of there. I can run 100%, man. That was from the IRS. That was literally from the IRS data right there, Vinyl. So Vinyl says, why not get the incomes from the tax reports? That, that was literally it. That was literally the IRS data. It was from the IRS.gov, their website, their spreadsheets. Um, uh, Yolanda, hey, I haven't seen Yolanda around for a while. Took out loans for my 403B years ago and defaulted on them. Should I pay these loans even though I defaulted on them? Uh, I don't, I mean... I don't get what you mean you defaulted on them. I mean, if you're, did you leave the company? You had to pay tax on them. Um, you didn't have to pay them back. There's nothing to pay back if uh, you left the company. I, I'm not sure what you mean by defaulted on them. Uh, rough winners up here. I'm in New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey, man. COVID has scaled back. It's quite nice. More cooking home, less expensive activity. Yeah, but you could have done that without the freaking Governor Murphy telling you to do that. I'm a little late, but glad I made it, says uh, Dustin. Right on. Semper Fi. Remember, Dustin is on. Wait, Dustin, are you in the, you're in the Marine Corps, right? So we got to tone it down for Dustin. Doesn't quite understand three syllable letter words. Ah, I'm just joking, your brother. Uh, Susie Orman can't imagine anyone living on less than 500 a year. Yeah. The Pats lost again. See, now, see so, so Sam's saying, why don't you pay attention? Because I, I don't pay, I get rid of stuff that makes me not feel good inside. You see what I'm saying? So I get rid of all my relationships that piss me off. I get rid of all the my sports. I just don't pay attention to sports anymore because it just it's not good. It doesn't make me feel good. Um, and then uh, I'll get rid of things that don't make me feel good when it comes to Tuesday. Because I just look, man. I I think Trump's going to win. I'm pretty confident, but I'm not. I don't want to go through the ups and downs of this election night. You know what I'm saying? I just I, I'll never forget when uh, I was driving back. Yeah, it's when I was learning my business banker thing in the you know south in the was it Roanoke or is it Charlotte? 
I can't remember. It was Roanoke or Charlotte. I was coming back from uh, from banker training in First Citizens Bank. And I remember driving back to Harrisonburg where we lived. And uh, Sean Handy was on the radio. And I was going through, maybe I was going through Roanoke. I was coming back from Charlotte, something like that. Anyway, Sean Handy was on the radio. And as the first exit polls came out, and you could hear his voice just like doom and gloom. And I remember, what's his name, uh, supporting Kerry. Forgot the dude's name, Bob something or other. He goes, uh, uh, may I be the first person to say Mr. President? I, I remember, I mean, I was like, damn, dude, Bush is losing in 2004. And you could hear Ken, uh, Hannity's voice. I was listening on the radio. His voice was just dis despondent. He's like, oh, man, there's still hope. And I was like, dude. And then Bush came back to win. But, you know, even back then, I was I was pretty fired up, man. I was like, I was like, damn. I remember not feeling good about it. I just didn't feel good. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't go riot and scream bloody murder. I was like, oh, and then Bush came back to one. By the time I got home, it looked like Bush was turning the corner. I was like, man, but he didn't win easy. I mean, he only won, what, 274 to 268 or something like that. It wasn't, it was, it was tight, man. Tight. So uh, he didn't win going away. That's for sure. But anyway, but I remember I said, I don't want to, who wants to go through that crap? I don't. Uh, it's all about expenses. Paradigm shift is probably why Josh appealed to me. Uh, Susie Silverspoon Ormond. Someone had did a video on Susie's uh, smack that she's not a, 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 she lied about her pedigree. Some lady too is a big video. Uh, Prepper Princess talked about it. Susie Ormond uh, lied about like her pedigree. Uh, she lied to get clients. It's just, it's, it's just, it's bad. Uh, stressed out working a job you hate, so keep up payments on stuff or reducing, simplifying, and lifting weight off shoulders. A very rich day, yeah, man. Uh, open a Biden foundation, hide your wealth, yeah, yeah, and don't pay social security taxes. Uh -huh. Crazy. Wall Street Journal did a report on how Biden got away from the FICA because he reported himself as getting a dividend as opposed to ordinary, as opposed to earned income. That's eh, bag. Look, I'm sure Trump does the same, but it just it's freaking nuts. We pay a lot, but get a lot. High schools are top notch. Town cleans up our. You can't be green and like the town cleaning up your leaves. They used to do this in Hatfield, very liberal. Camden County, that's where I used to live. The street sweeper would come through. You'd have to put the leaves out in the street. They'd come through and they'd take them to the landfill. That is not green. What they should do is they should freaking mulch it for you right there and put it back on your land. That to make soil enrichment. Can't be green. All these New Jerseyites saying, we're green. No, you're not. If you got a street sweeper coming through, pick up your leaves, you cannot have a better mulch than your leaves. That's the best mulch there is. You freaking grind that stuff up and you put them on your soil. That's the best way to build. You can't really build soil, but you can enhance soil. Ugh. I don't want to hear you saying you're green, uh, S.V. Am Amo Dallin. If, uh, if you like this New Jersey coming through and picking up your leaves and taking them to the landfill. That's horrific. The worst use of friggin' nature's abundance from God, by the way, that there could possibly be. Uh, we pay a lot, but get a lot. High schools are top notch. I will grant you that. And Haddonfield, the schools are great. When we came down to Georgia, we were significantly ahead. That's a fact. Huge problem with teachers' unions, though. Huge, huge problem with pensions. Huge problem. And you guys will never get out from under that. Ta garbage recycling said, yeah, I look, I enjoyed my, my neighborhood in New Jersey. I'm not going to lie to you. I enjoyed being an hour and a half away from the beach. I liked it. Uh, we enjoyed being two hours away from Hershey, Pennsylvania. It was, I, I enjoyed it. And then the Delaware gave us a reprieve from some of the, the crazy – uh, winters that was in Pennsylvania for some reason the Delaware River would stop it from hitting New Jersey too hard it was, it was great so when I mean I don't know what the the geography or whatever it is the physics behind that but the Delaware River really added as a, uh, a shield from some of the crazy stuff I, I I look we liked it just as crazy hot and you can't own firearms and you, know, you don't allow me to own firearms you're not a free state that's all there is to it and then Chris Christie because he's such a squish Got a black lady who was uh, being, uh, she had a TRO in Philadelphia against some clown who wanted to basically kill her. She took her two kids away from him because he was threatening her to go to New Jersey to seek a safe haven. She had a firearm because she was trying to protect herself. She got pulled over for some ungodly reason. The cops pulled a black woman, man, remember? Because uh, we're supposed to be, uh, take care of black people. Black Lives Matter. And, um, and uh, she said, I want you to know I have a firearm. 
but it was it was registered, licensed, whole thing in PA, not in New Jersey. They threw her butt in jail. In jail. CPS took her children, freaking scumbags. And Chrissy just sat on his tush, allowing this to happen. Finally, I think he finally pardoned her. But freaking, what the hell, man? You see what I'm saying? I think the only reason he pardoned her, did Trump, was he behind that? Or was that before? I can't remember, but there was something... There was a paradigm shift on Trump or that made Chris, he said, I better part. I think maybe it was during the primary. Maybe it was during the primary when he was running where he, I can't remember, but what a freaking scumbag. I said, dude, this is such a clear case of uh, uh, just everything wrong with the political nature. They say they're claiming for black people. No, they're not. They say they claim for women. No, they're not. They say the cops will be their protection. No, they weren't. You see what I'm saying? And, uh, and they say they want kids to be with families. No, they don't. They don't want to break up black families. Yes, they do. And yet let's all throw our weight behind Biden because why? Why again? Oh, the Biden crime bill. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Biden crime bill. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Peter Schiff has been pushing the gold bug for Evs, man. Uh, uh, Exactly. Dan. Uh, Dan says, is 250 enough? Is 500 enough? Is a million enough? Uh, no answer. Questions out of context. It depends on expenses and other income sources. I could not agree more, man. Right on, Dan. Thanks for being there, brother. New Hampshire, here we come. Uh, the big guy is going to lose. Yeah, we know who the big guy is. Uh, know your number. I have mine. Uh, what, what is? I don't even know what that means. Know your number. Like you need 1.8 million to retire. Um, how do you how do you factor that number? Yeah, I don't I don't I never bought into that know your number stuff. Uh, my biggest concern is that 51 I uh, uh, 1.6 net worth, no debt. I don't have a house since my divorce. But then if I want to slow travel overseas, not sure I want to be a landlord. I have a home to invest in. Uh, Paul Merriman, yeah, I did a video on him about a year ago. Um, He's good, not great. I think a lot of people uh, love Paul Merriman. Uh, that's a fact. He's good, not great. Um, let's just put that. I like him. I don't love him, if that makes sense. And I've, some other people say that guy, the heavyset guy, J, is it JD or Simple Life? Or what's that guy's name? He did a speech at Google. He's a heavy guy, though. I know that. Collins? can't remember i haven't i just the guy bores me frank i haven't watched read or anything i just he just i just said oh i don't know it might be great i have i've yet he just i I've, I've seen enough of these older men um that in frank older white guys and i hate to be like that but i've seen the same perspective time and time again and i still see it today where people who are smart guys uh, but they're not they're not financial planners. And that's why I like Bengen because Bill Bengen, the, you know, the, the, the founder of the 4% rule is a literal financial planner. Uh, I think Paul Merriman is actually, uh, but I'm not sure about the Collins guy. A lot of people I, I, I get, you read this guy's book or seen this guy's videos. They're just not financial planners. You know, they might have read an article here or there, but uh, I hate to say it, but that's, that's not enough because I've shown with you so many times on Sunday, how many articles like that are just bogus based on bad, bad data to begin with it's horrible uh uh right on jill i almost got caught by spell hat yeah it's I almost got by this yeah susie orman man just not a good person uh you do enter your full social security and the tax portion yeah, we already talked about that. I mean, Charlotte and condos are now at least two twenty-five for decent place. Property taxes and HOA would be about four fifty a month. Uh, knowledge is power. Love this community, right on HB. Uh, and like to stay here. Okay, if you don't plan on being there most time, okay, good. Looks like you guys. Um, I think we'll know who won the election when Josh Brock. You no, know, I'll Brock. I'll be doing uh month Wednesday and month Wednesday morning. I'll report uh, for sure. But again, I mean, we just have to, you know, look, I'm from Maine. In Maine, we're a pessimistic bunch. We always assume the worst and pray for the best. But you, you cannot help. That's why, look, why Red Sox fans, Pats fans, I know that this, you know, the 2000s has been great for us. Bru the Bruins, the Pats, the Red Sox. 
but you know, if you're from Maine and Northern New England, generally speaking, you're a pessimist. Maine in particular, I don't know about New Hampshire. I, I presumably Boston, not the same other than the sports. But if you're from Maine, you're a pessimistic bunch. That's all there is to it. It gets dark early at night. It's cold, you know, five, six months out of the year for the winter. Um, you're just a pessimistic bunch, man. You know what I'm saying? You're always thinking, what's going to come get me? Is it going to be the, we're going to have a, uh, not be able to pay for oil. Uh, you just name it. And so because of that, you always expect the worst when you hope for the best. And that's, that's it. But you expect the worst. And so I am expecting, I, 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 I'm expecting to wake up Wednesday morning and think Trump lost. I'm, I'm preparing myself for that. I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm preparing myself for that. So that way I won't be too despondent. Because I know me. I'm an emotional guy. I'm an Irish dude. You know, Scots Irish, the Scots, not Scotch, Scots with an S, S-C-O-T-S, Scots Irish are a very volatile bunch of people. The German side of me is very stoic, but I, I got my, uh, I got more of the Scots Irish side than I got my German side. So I'm up and down. My brother on the other hand, very German. Oh my goodness. Very low key. And he's a boiling guy inside, but very low key, which is funny laid back. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm freaking volatile. No other way around. And I don't, I don't want to be volatile when things get, and when, when my way goes wrong, I don't want to be freaking depressed that Biden wins. I just want to say it sucks. What are we going to do about it? And to be honest with you, it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't change anything. You are the one in control of your own happiness. You control your own happiness. To allow you to be happy because of uh, external actions of other people, that, that's, that's not good. You can't do that. So if you're expecting Trump to win and he loses, and you're going to be depressed. Yeah, it's okay to be depressed and, and down for a day, but freaking pipe up, man. You got to get back on it. You can't, I mean, you still got a life to lead. You still live in America. And watch, what's going to happen is the right wing will start taking back and say, no, we're not putting up for this anymore. We're done. I'm just telling you, it's, it's the ebbs and flows. And then we'll get reelected in 2021 in Virginia, New Jersey. I don't know about New Jersey, but certainly Virginia probably. This, this happens in 93, happened in... Uh, 2000 and um, not when did McConnell, McDonald, McConnell, Bob McConnell was a two thousand. I think it was 2009. Uh, I guess it happened in 2009 for uh, Christie too. So 2009 happened, 2000 and 1993 happened with George Allen and Christy Todd Whitman. Um, you know, the, in 1994, the Republicans took over the house and Senate. We gave a little bit of ground in 96, but we retained, you know, the majorities until 2000, and six for the house in 2000, it was at the tie in 2000 where Specter sold her. No, that was in 2009. There was, a, there was a tie in 2000, I think. I can't remember. But anyway, long story short, it just it ebbs and flows, man. It ebbs and flows. So basically what happens is if uh, Sniffy Joe wins in 2020, we'll take over the governorships of uh, Virginia. I'm not so sure about New Jersey, but Virginia most likely will take over the, the state legislature back in Virginia for sure. And then uh, 2022, we'll probably take back the House, the state legislatures and governorships and the midterm will go heavy to the, to the right for sure. More further solidifying the, the right in all these places that, uh, that we're creeping up on, Minnesota, Michigan, these Pennsylvania even, and just be solidifying it. And so what will happen in 2024 you know, we'll have some fresh folks out there. It'd be great now, but I'm, I don't, I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, but it, this happens. I mean, you now hopefully we won't go too far to the right, like the Democrats have gone to the left. Um, but, you know, communists with the media, I mean, look, the Democrats are full commie basically, and they got the media to support them. We don't have that. So we're always fighting a fight to at least get some kind of, it's hard for us to go too far to the right because we don't have the academics, we don't have the entertainment, we don't have the sports world, we don't have the media, we don't have the financial people back, we don't have anybody, it's just us. And so because of that, we keep ourselves pretty solid, I think, on the ground. But uh, just be prepared for a loss, I'm telling you right now. Be prepared for a full, but think about it. Do you truly think Biden, don't you remember what happened in 2008? The Democrats had huge majorities in this, in the, uh, that was, it was 2008, when, well, 2009, huge majorities in the House. Specter became the 60th vote for freaking the Democrats in the Senate. It's 60 40, man. The House was huge. I think we had like 170 Republican 
congressman in the in the in the house in 2009 the democrats were it was huge in 2009 the democrats controlled everything state legislatures governorships it was nuts nuts you thought 1992 was bad i still got my washington post of clinton winning 92 and just how i was like oh it just pissed me off that was nothing compared to 2008 2008 was painful, but it was, I mean, it's like socialism was here. I think a lot of people forget why we were so nervous about it because the Democrats had everything. They had Nancy Pelosi walking down with a gavel. Like, ah, um, they got a picture of that and how, oh, it was, it was just heartbreaking because you knew these guys were up to no good. And of course they were, but here we are today. Um, and that's the thing, man. I mean, you know, we have more solidified second amendment rights uh, we got less abortion going on in the country. We got more uh, black vote coming our way than we've had probably since the 1960s. Don't forget, Martin Luther King was a Republican. Uh, we got more Spanish folks voting for us than they had. Uh, we were going to lose everything uh, because McCain was such an idiot. And then Mittens just, uh, he was an extreme conservative, whatever the hell that meant. And uh, our, we are better off now than we were in 2008 by far, by far. We've washed away the remnants of the Bush era. We've washed away, you know, the Bill Crystals of the world, the fake guys. Um, they were just a stronger party now. So even if we lose, Trump has has solidified the populism of the right, which is which is great. We're no longer globalists. We're no longer corporatist. We're Main Street populists, and it's, uh, I could not be happier. I could not be happier. So just be prepared. I don't think he's going to lose. I think he's going to win going away. But if he does, it sucks. But we'll always go down to Trump. And say, man. You, you, unlike George H.W. Bush, uh, which squandered everything, uh, Trump brought us back from, uh, you know, the, from the death, really, because in 2008, it was, it was bad. I don't think people remember how bad it was. It, it, what, it was bad. Uh, okay. Right. Right on. If I retire now, should I start converting to a Roth IRA and how does that affect my taxes? Yep, you should. I don't know what your other income is, but yeah. Uh, or just do a James Altucher and stay oh, only in Airbnb full time, nonstop travel. Uh, I, I hate traveling that much. Uh, Rental is a good option for retirees, gives you a lot of freedom. I disagree, man. I, I tell you, you, you never have that debt paid. You always have a payment. Now, my man Prairie Mark, I think, is in the uh, Philippines. So rent for a guy in Philippines is a lot different than a guy for, look, hello. Don't forget to paw the like button. Give me a kiss. Plant one. Plant one right here. Plant one. Kiss. Yeah. Oh, oh look the baby. Hi, baby. Oh, look, he's going to get, he wants me to rub his belly. Rub, rub, rub the belly. Uh, I wouldn't rent because no, that, that debt never goes away. It's, I mean, it's a debt. It's a cash flow. I mean, without question, the cash outflow. Uh, so uh, Prepper Princess, she had a post the other day that said, your house is a liability. I said, this is, the, what is it with people who keep saying this? This is insane. Your house is not a liability. <laughs> It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I know they got it from the good guy, bad guy, or rich guy, bad guy, whatever it is, that guy, that clown. Your house is not a liability. Stop with this nonsense. You got to live someplace, man. You're crazy. Uh, all right, let's see what else. Uh, okay, Thomas Sowell's back, man. Uh, Portuguese language is not as easy to learn as Spanish. There was a Trump train event in my town. Never saw so many flags and uh, happy people in one spot. It was insane. So uh, Thomas Sowell, that's the true Thomas Sowell. <laughs> yeah, he's in San Francisco through the Hoover Institution or the, uh, not San Francisco, Palo Alto with Stanford. That, that can't be our Thomas Sowell. If it was, I, no way. But uh, <laughs> ugh, I wish they had a, a blue check mark thing here because I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nuts. Uh, yeah, uh, Antifa show up to fight. The Trump crowd just ignored them. Yep, they got more class and uh, they got more class and in, in their freaking pink than Antifa and BLM has in their whole freaking body. Uh, I'm skeptical about our rich journey. They're like fire scam. Uh, do they? Those are rich journey people. They sell stuff, Homer, because I've seen them on occasion on my feed. They are they? They got something for sale. Eesh. 
All right. You're either American or Democrat. You can't be both. Eh. Vinyl, stop. Stop. Uh, most of the time you say good stuff, but sometimes you say stuff that's just dumb. Nancy Pelosi was Speaker of the House. Come on, dude. There are two houses of Congress. The Senate and the House of Representatives. Oh, geez, Louise. Dude, if you don't know what you're talking about, don't say anything. It just, uh, you, you, a lot of times you say good stuff. Every now and again, you say something. I'm just like, man, come on, don't. If California goes, yeah, California's not going red. Let's, uh, let's stop with that. California's not going red. Uh, uh, we mulch our garlic breads this week with leaves. Yeah, right on. I got to get out there. I had some leaves I pushed over to the side. I should have put in my garden for sure. Uh, and we used to burn the leaves on the side of the street. Wonderful smell. Good old days. Yeah, absolutely. Believe it or not, ashes can be used. I know, you know wood chips, but certainly ashes can be used for, uh, uh, for uh, nutrients as well to some degree. Uh, let's see. Yeah, why is the Second Amendment treated differently than other, other guaranteed rights? Because it's a gun and they're scary. And they never meant to be AR-15s when they only had muskets. I say, yeah, the freedom of speech was never meant to be for internet when they only had, well, they have parchment paper. <laughs> uh, sweet and sour sniffles. That's right, Mike. Sweet and sour sniffles. J Jim Collins, a simple plan to wealth guy. That's it. Yep. Oh, like I'm not bashed. I've never seen. I just, everyone talks about him. I just look at him. Ah, I got feelings. Give me another. I don't know. It's just my own thing. Um, All right. Let's see. Uh, control your own destiny or someone else will. Yep. You really think the Republicans will be around after Biden legalizes 20 to 30 million illegal aliens that brings in their relatives? I think we, uh, I, I, so Roberto, the reason Trump is getting more and more of the black vote and more and more of the, the Hispanic vote is because of his stance on illegal immigration. And this is the easy way, easy way that Republicans could have made inroads with the black vote many moons ago and Hispanics by saying, we are not gonna allow for illegal immigrants to get a neck ahead of you guys because they're not Americans. And blacks are Americans, Hispanics are Americans. And uh, the Republicans said, I remember freaking John McCain, he looked at a rally of 700 because he took like he was bought and paid by the corporatists. We know that for a fact. And he looked at this rally protest in Los Angeles of 700,000 people waving Mexican flags. He goes, look, the people are telling us they want amnesty. A friggin idiot. Dude. It was just like, you're dumb. You're dumb. That's not that mean anything. They got I mean, they got a million people to rally against Reagan in 1982 because of the recession. And then Reagan won a landslide, probably would have taken Minnesota if there wasn't cheating up there as well. 50, 49 uh, states, the one. And that's where Mondol was from, was from freaking Minnesota. Mondol was from Minnesota. That's the only state he won, just barely. And Minnesota hasn't gone red since 1972, by the way. Good chance Trump picks that off. Anyway, the point about that was, is that 20, 30 million, million illegal immigrants, they might come in and vote uh, the left, but how many of those people are A, going to vote? I doubt that many. B, on top of that, how many people are that going to piss off to go to the right? You think Blacks want freaking all these illegal immigrants just given? I mean, think about it. If I'm Black, and I'm white, and I'm white, it pisses me off. But I'm Black, I'm sitting there saying, why are we giving in-state tuition and all these benefits to illegal immigrants that we don't get? You see what I'm saying? Hold on. There you go. If I'm freaking uh, a legalized American from Poland, from Mexico, from Guatemala, from anywhere. I'm saying, why are we making all these efforts for illegals when I, when I don't get crap? That's crazy. I think the Republicans can exploit that like crazy to expand the base. I really do. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do agree that there's a challenge, but I don't, you, you get, we got to stop booking these things and it's just static. It's kind of like the, uh, 
the people at the 1%, they're not the same people. 1% uh, ebbs and flows. I did a video on that maybe yesterday or today, I can't remember. Just showing you the difference in income and how it's, I was this morning, so the persistent income is not there. It's a, it's a volatile income for the one for the people in the high end. You know, some years they make a lot of money, some years they don't. There's no, other than the very top, thus the wealth tax, other than the very top, the, the bottom or the other people are just ebbs and flows. There's no stat. I mean, just think, the blacks were, the, Martin Luther King Jr. is Republican. You see what I'm saying? The blacks are Republicans. I mean, Republicans dominated the North. The ball, uh, abolitionists were Republicans. There's a Klan that's a Democrat. There's a freaking Knight Riders that were Democrats. You know, the all these people are Democrats. You know what I'm saying? They weren't Republicans, and now it's just shifted for sure. And because of that, the same thing can happen time and time again. Um, will we ever have a full uh, one-party state like California and throughout the United States? No, we won't. It's a federalism. You know what I'm saying? Now, that doesn't mean the Democrats won't be in charge more than less. But you always have a place that will at least be somewhat free, unlike New York. New York is, uh, is dead to rights, unfortunately. Uh Why did blacks become Democrats? Well, did you read what LBJ said, Sam? I mean, I'll let you read that. <laughs> uh, and you won't like what he said. I presume you got to know what LBJ said. I presume you got to know what LBJ said about blacks and how they will be a, uh, and it wasn't a nice word he said about blacks and how they'll be voting for Democrats for generations. And he was right. He was right. Just read, man. You know that. You got to know that. Sam, you know that, right? How LBJ said with his legislation, those will vote for uh, Democrats for generations. Because he looked at you guys like they all the Democrats do as a voting block, not as individual, unique human beings. Uh, I don't expect to have a beer with Trump. I just want him to get things done. Yeah, I'm sick of people also saying that all these people are saying Trump. He's not like, who is that? The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette endorsed Trump. And that was the first time they were endorsed Republicans since 1972. Can we stop with this? That Trump's this bad guy. I'm sick of that, dude. Well, I just, that, so for you who support Trump, and I'm not saying you're doing that Mac attack. I mean, can we stop? Because first, Trump doesn't drink beer. He's a teetotaler. But we can we stop this idea that Trump is somehow a bad guy. He's like the worst guy. He's a cretin and all this. And I'm sitting there thinking, look at freaking Sniffy Joe. Look at Sniffy Joe. So we got Trump on tape saying, grab him by the pee. We got Tr Sniffy Joe holding a little girl's right here on just a couple of years ago. That's crazy. The guy's a freaking clown. He is a scumbag. Never mind Ted Kennedy. Chris Dodd, all these people, they called it Kennedy Dodd sandwich. It was freaking disgusting. So Trump somehow, well, he's a, he's a just, you know, piece of, stop that. It pisses me off. You think Melania, who is a devout Catholic, by the way, she speaks five languages. This is going to piss Trump, uh, say my man Sam off. Who do you think is brighter, Melania or, or Michelle, don't anyone say that because I don't want you going off the rails on Michelle. Sam was very offended when I said something about Michelle. <sighs> who do you think is brighter? Literally, who, who's, who's brighter, Michelle or Melania? Uh, Michelle is not by far any stretch of imagination. Melania is freaking brilliant. And then they're all bagging on her because she speaks with an accent. Who is it, Bette Miller or something? You can't even speak English. She speaks five languages. She knows communism. She knows what it's like. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, somehow she's married to a Cretan, Melania, devout Catholic. Psh. From where is she? From uh, Belarus or Bulgaria or something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, stop. I'd love to have a beer with. I don't drink. I'm a teetotaler, unless you can count caffeine. It's not. Trump's a teetotaler. I would, but now they got my man Jimmy posted. They got alcohol free Guinness. <laughs> Uh, it's got to taste like decaf coffee, right? But anyway, I would, I don't care about, I like Trump. I freaking, I don't get all these people saying he's not a good person. I'm looking like, who the hell is, look at this guy running for Senate in North Carolina, Cal Cunningham. They're all freaking Cretans, man. And that includes Republicans too, I guarantee. So who was it? Newt Gingrich? Uh, not a good guy there. Um, who else? Uh, now he's converted to Catholicism. I, look, every, this is a thing too. If you're Christian, 
you don't hold yourself in judgment on other people because you look right here at your own face. You say, man, that is a face of a sinner. I'm a bad dude. And that's why you get on your knees and say, Jesus, I don't know why you died for me, but you did. Not only did you die, you died in a gruesome way. And the irony of it all is all those apostles, huh? they denied Jesus. They were scared of the mobs. They were scared of the, inversion, the, the previous version of Antifa, Black Lives Matter. And they ran. They scared. They didn't want anything to do with old Jesus. Nothing. Then something happened. It's weird, right? So they ran away like wimps, cowards. Did a fight, I guess, you know, other than uh, cutting off the Roman ear. And Jesus said, don't do that. It was Thomas. Did, it was a Thomas did that. Who did? Who cut off the what, No, Simon, right? Simon. Simon cut off the ear of the Roman soldier. He said, don't do that. But anyways, they're all scattered. They're all scared. You know what I'm saying? And then something happened. Well, they all, not only were not scared anymore, they went out into the belly of the beast proclaiming the gospel. Hmm. So I'm scared one day, and a couple days later, I'm not scared anymore. What happened? Hmm. Anyone want to guess what happened to make the apostles suddenly have no fear? Hmm. What could it be? And it's a fake book. Okay, so the uh, so Jesus was fake. Hmm. So you're saying the Quran was fake? Huh? huh? You gonna say that out loud? If the Quran is fake. You gonna say that? Hmm. So if we can admit that Jesus wasn't fake, that's a step in the right direction. All right, because you don't want to be against the Quran, do you? Huh? So forget the Bible. You don't want to be against the Quran. You don't want to say Jesus is fake because that would put you at odds with your Muslim brothers and sisters. Scary. But you do that. You do that. You know, proclaim that loud and clear if you noticed. All right. So we can admit at least Jesus was alive, right? We can admit that Jesus was a good man. This seems to be what everyone says. Yeah, he's kind of like Gandhi and whatnot. He's a good guy. Was Gandhi a good guy? Hmm. Was Gandhi truly a good man? Have you read into him? Hmm. So let's just say we can admit that, though. Well, we're admitting that based on what evidence? Well, so we admit Jesus was alive. We admit Jesus was a good guy based on what evidence? Well, yeah, well, uh, yeah, the same evidence which says what? What, 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 what? The same evidence that says Jesus rose from the dead, huh? And those apostles all of a sudden said, I'm going to die for my belief. And look, dying for your belief, that's common. People do it all the time. Osama bin Laden died for his belief. Well, he didn't. I mean, he got smoked for it. But at the end of the day, people who followed Osama bin Laden died for their beliefs. People die for their beliefs all the time. The, the interesting thing was the same people who died for their beliefs in this regard did not want to die for their beliefs just a few days beforehand. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they die horrible deaths. Peter gets crucified upside down for his belief. <laughs> but yet before they said, no, nope, I don't know that guy. Not once, not twice, but thrice. Interesting. Why would Peter change? Why would doubting Thomas of all people change? Hmm. Yeah, something of interest. I love Jesus. People make this too, uh, too complex to be Christian. Being Christian is easy. Did Jesus live? Yeah, he lived. Did Jesus die? Well, if he lived, he died. The question you have to come, just deal with it, did Jesus rise from the dead? That's what you have to find. I can't prove it. You can't prove it. I can't prove he didn't. You can't. I'm not going to You can't. I'm not gonna ask you to prove it negative. I'm not going to. I'm just going to say, hey, it's just interesting that, what, 2 billion people, 3 billion people still acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God? A poor white trash guy, well, not white trash, freaking, you know, uh, olive trash guy from the hills, hillbilly, hillbilly Jesus from Nazareth. Who was it said, what good comes from Nazareth? Was uh, Daniel, what good comes from Nazareth? A hillbilly, dude. Jesus from Nazareth, just a hillbilly. I'm not going to follow a hillbilly. And all these people not only follow the hillbilly, they died for them. They continue to this to this day. Interesting. So, I mean, that could be a fake, could be fake news, could be uh, we've been you know, lied, brainwashed. Yeah, all that stuff is true. Could be. Even Paul says it. He says if it wasn't true, this you know we we've all lived a lie. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, we've all lived a lie. Paul said it, and I agree. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, it's all a lie. 
Well, not a lie, just fake, fake news. Or it could be true, one of those two things. You know, the evidence will have to be your own personal evidence. And for me, I'm just telling you right now, when Chloe was in the ICU with ventricular tachycardia and why reading these babies being killed because the Australian lockdown, because they could not get the heart need, they needed uh, because of the lockdown. They killed these babies to save their political power. The freaking scumbags, scum effing bags in Australia. And that is a supposed right wing government. They can all kiss my big fat behind. Anyway, so you got these babies in Australia, four of them, three or four of them who could not get heart operations in their time of need. And this, they turned around and died because they could not get the medical help they needed because of the lockdowns. We got killed people to save them. Kind of reminds me of, was it uh, the one in Miley? We got to burn the city to save it, uh, burn the village to save it. Anyway, so what happened when Chloe was having her, uh, when she was born and she had to go to the University of Virginia, they had to airlift her out to the airlifter. I can't remember if they airlifted it or if they took her ambulance. I, I, maybe it was an ambulance. They had to airlift or take an ambulance to UVA from Harrisonburg, Virginia in the middle of the night um, uh, because she had ventricular tachycardia and her heart, if you fall, you know, death metal, you'll hear a double bass drum go. <laughs> her heart was beating like that. And, uh, and it's funny, I, all the docs I've talked to since said, you sure it was, uh, it was VTAC, not uh, SVT, which is uh, supra, basically it's two different tachycardia. One's on the bottom of your heart, one's on the top of your heart. And the ventricular tachycardia is on the bottom. The SVT is on the top, which is a lot more common. V, uh, ventricular uh, VTAC, not very common. In fact, so uncommon. I actually met a doctor on a plane one time. He goes, ah, he didn't think, he said, I don't, he basically I could tell he thought I was lying. Not lying, but he thought I was misunderstood. I said, I'm just telling you, dude. And I told him who the doc was. I forgot the dude. He goes, man, I know that guy. So yeah, that's our doc. He goes, oh, okay, maybe you're telling the truth. Wouldn't even say it like that, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, the point was, so I got down there. My wife is still in the hospital. Um, and I, uh, it was a long day, a long day. It's about 1130 at night. My wife said, just call down to UVA, make sure Chloe got there and she's okay because you know, we had no knowledge. I called down there and a lady named Joanne answered it very curt with me and uh, um, asked, what's the account number? I said, I don't know. They just took her on the ambulance. I, I, don't, I don't know anything. Goes, what's, I, need, I can't help you, sir, if I don't know the account number. I said, and she was just curt with me. And, and, and I, uh, I, I just, I, I was so like, not panicked, but so just, I was stunned. I, I like said, uh, and I just hung up and uh, I was going to call my wife said, do we have an account number? And I just, it just this, I, this panic. I don't know what it was. It came over me. And I started bawling my, I got on my hands and knees. And I started bawling, bawling like a baby. I said, I, cause it's totally out of my grasp. I could not do anything. It was literally, I could not do anything. My daughter was someplace, you know, so presumably in a hospital in the University of Virginia, the lady who I called to find out the status of Chloe in this hospital in the University of Virginia was, was rude as could be. And um, my wife was in a hospital, you know, freaking scared off her wits. I didn't even have a chance to hold Chloe. And I just, I, I just got on my hands and knees crying like a freaking baby. And then all of a sudden, and I've shared this with you before, and I'll share it again, I'll share it again. This complete sense of peace came over. It says, it's okay. It's okay. And I can start crying now thinking about it. It was, it was, did not say it's going to be okay. It said, it's okay. Did not say Chloe's going to be okay. Did not say your life's going to be great. It just said, it's okay. <laughs> That's a personal relationship. Now, you might say that could be anything. I had a Jewish people used to tell me, or oh, these guys up in Newtown, Pennsylvania, as a matter of fact. They said that was your was a defensive mechanism. Okay. Um, for me, it's the Holy Spirit, without question. The Holy Spirit speaking to me, says it's going to be okay. It was, I, I, and I've heard this story from so many other people, the exact same thing. I mean, the exact same. It's going to be okay. And, uh, and I, met, I just, it was nuts. And I, I mean, it wasn't like the clouds open. And like in the Simpsons where Homer talked, God talks to Homer, Homer, it wasn't like that. It was just, it was just a feeling of peace and serenity. It's okay. I'll never forget it. It was the best. Thing. I mean, literally, it was the most, it was the most satisfactory thing I could ever have possibly asked for in my life. And I knew, I knew right then that God is great. And always, and uh, and he loves you. It doesn't mean it's gonna be a good life. Oh man, I'm gonna cry like a big old baby. 
It just means, you know, that was 20, that was uh, 17 years ago. How many times have I sinned against this guy since? A million times a Sunday, but I know he still loves me. He wants a personal relationship with you. That's what makes us different from Muslims. God wants our God, you know, uh, wants a personal relationship with each and every one of his, uh, of his people love him. He wants to be loved. He's like Trump in a way. Trump just wants to be liked. God wants to be loved. And he'll love you. He sent his son to die for it. He wants to be loved. And he, he will reign no matter what happens in this election, no matter what happens with, you know, freaking in your life, good, bad, or indifferent. And the sad thing is when we get it good, we start thinking, yeah, we don't need God. We can put him in our little box and eh, we'll call God when we need him. But right now I'm doing get good without him. That's why Jesus says it's easier for a freaking camel to get through the, the, the uh, eye of a needle than a rich man to get to heaven because a rich man sounds like God. I got this. Oh, man. I didn't mean to go on this little sermon here, but uh, God is good always. And I probably won't do another live stream until, uh, you know, until after this. I won't do one tomorrow and I'll do one. I won't do one on Tuesday. But come the election time, God is still good, man. It's all he's got it going on. I don't know what or when or how, what is. I don't know. You don't know. But you think about it. If you look at the Big Bang Theory, let's just use that for an example. All right. We have this tiny little. I mean, we have it's not even this. It's tiny. All this, in theory now, this is the Big Bang. A tiny little pinprick. That's where all the energy of this universe came. All right, from a, I mean, something that's you can't in you, you, it's it's impossible to comprehend how small that was in the overall scheme of things. The tiny little pinprick, and somehow it just combusted. <laughs> and we're all here. That's silly, but that's the thought. That's a theory, and of course, I can't be proved. You know, I can't not prove. We don't know. But anyway, that is, that's just silly. But you know, be it as it may, let's just. Even if God allows for the Big Bang, and people do believe that, that's fine. <laughs> if God <laughs> is in control that much, would you really think you can put him in this little box and say, God, I'm going to call on you when I need? I mean, think about how vast and mighty he is, and yet he still wants a personal relationship with you. He doesn't just want a personal relationship with that guy. He wants it or that country or that group of people. He wants with you specifically because he loves you. And he wants you to be happy for eternity. And heaven is happiness for eternity because you have God's love. That wrap You wrap yourself in God's love. And like C.S. Lewis says, you're not obligated. You know, we say on earth, thy will be done, God. Then we go to heaven and the pearly gates and God says, thy will be done. If you want to deny him, he said, okay, I deny you. You deny me. You don't have to be here. And then you go on without God's love and misery. Now it's not, I mean, we don't know. Uh, we don't, it's not freaking the gnashing of teeth, probably, probably not hell and uh, uh, or uh, fire and brimstone, but you know, who knows? But either way, it's without God's love and without God's love is devastating. That's all you, that's, that's it. You don't have God's love. You go to heaven, God's love abounds. I, I can't, you can't fathom it. You can't fathom it. But that's what makes it so great because you're sitting there thinking, this is going to be awesome to go with God. But how do you go with God? Well, you got to admit that you're a sinner. Absolutely. And then you got to ask for forgiveness. Those two things. You say, hey, God, I have sinned against you. I, I, I've sinned, I've sinned, I've sinned. And I ask for your forgiveness. That's it. Pretty simple. But Josh, how about the uh, the Israelites and you know killing off? Well, I'm drawing the blank who they killed. Uh, I, I I don't know. How do you quantify this or gay marriage? And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You don't have to know. God does God's thing. We do our thing, and our thing is to know that God loves us and to reciprocate as much as we possibly can. As the sinners we are. But Josh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have all the answers, man. I just have a personal relationship, and that's all I need. All right, so I'm going to get out of here. So remember that come Tuesday, come hell or high water, God's still in charge. He still loves you. He still wants a relationship with you. Don't get too crazy. That's going to be party time. Trump train is going to roll. I feel it in my bones. But look, man, I thought I thought there's a, a more than an outside chance Romney was going to win in 2012, and, and he got skunked. Uh, someone made a good point today, though. He goes, yeah, but Romney had one big uh, rally in uh, Newtown, Pennsylvania. Trump has had many rallies. That's, that's a good point. So we shall see. Just relax. Life is still good. You're still in America. People are still good. There are some crazies out there, but we're going to win. And if we don't, we just live for another day.